guys, I'm Mike Ferris and welcome to this parrot painting lesson. I'm going to be starting off on this 11 by 14 inch pre-stretch canvas and my image already laid out. And I'm going to get started with my number 12 natural round bristle brush. And I have on my palette some phthalo blue, raw umber, cad yellow, and titanium white. So with this natural bristle brush, I'm going to start doing the background here. And I'm just going to make up a general green color here. And just get some yellow to that. And I'm just going to start filling in the background with these green tones and just really do this out of focus bokeh sort of background. It's going to really contrast the details in the bird off of it super well. And these natural round bristle brushes, as I said in other videos, are perfect for doing all of the different out of focus effects. And with these larger brushes, I can actually lay the color down, of course, a lot better and more you know, a little bit quicker. So I'm just going to go ahead and just place the general values just kind of here and there with this. And I'll just change up some of the green values. Okay, so now I'm going to take some raw umber into the mix. And that really dulls this green down into more of an army green. And if I get a little bit more yellow, I can warm that up and make it a little bit more greeny there. Okay, and now titanium white to lighten that. Get a little bit more color in there. Let's see, I'll borrow some of this other green that I made. So I kind of want it a little bit more green. So you can make this however. There's no right or wrong. It's just background. Just getting some background here and there. See, so I'm going to go something like this. And I'm actually going to wipe some of that paint off my brush here. I got a little cloth that I'm using. And... I want this very dry brush because I want to start doing more like this instead of this, which I can cover over this, no problem, and just kind of stir this up a little bit more. But it really just gives that out of focus bokeh effect when you use it dry with these natural round bristle brushes. Super excellent for this. And I'm not worried if I get in here just a little bit because I'm going to knock it back over, of course, when I fill in the parrot. So as long as I can still see those lines, it's all good. Okay, just sort of like this. Just filling in background. Okay, so let's see, get some blue now and some raw umber together. And just a little titanium white here. And so I got sort of this blue hue into this dull green. And that'll be, I don't know, maybe a little bit in here. So I'm loading the brush quite a bit, and it is a lot of bristles, as you can see, and I'm getting more ground covered this way, but I just kind of want to get color for now, and then on top, I'll load a lot less paint and do more of this fuzzy out-of-focus effect. But again, I'm using it dry just to get that established anyway, so you can really do this however you want. You don't even have to do it out-of-focus. Just blend colors together. It's just, like I said, background, and not going to be too critical with it. You can do yours to any degree or perfection that you'd like to do. Definitely experiment, do some abstract stuff, whatever you feel like doing. Totally anything that is fun and enjoyable in this. Okay, let's put this value right here. Just kind of blend that, stir that down a little bit. See, so I can still see where I'm at here. Not a huge deal. You know, I'll get that. So, all good with that. Okay, now I just want a little bit more blue into it. I'm going to tap most of that off. A little bit more raw umber to that. Now, some titanium white. And I just kind of want a little bit here, so I'm going to sort of take a lot of that color off see there just tapping it and see and then I can kind of keep it in a smaller area like so okay let's see maybe I'll just I'll drag some of that value down here maybe a little bit I don't know however it's all good okay I'm gonna go back to a little bit more of this other green here 
see, so that changes it up. Okay, just generally around the bird. And, you know, I'm not going too crazy, but again, just a little spill in here, no big deal. We're going to knock that back. And it's all wonderful. No stress needed. All right, so let's throw some of that maybe right there. I don't know, I'm going to use that kind of flatten this out a little bit more, I guess. Okay, I guess, I guess, whatever you want to do. Background, super free, especially these out of focus abstract ones, and you really can just do whatever you want to do. Okay, I'm just adding a little bit more yellow, and that makes it a little bit lighter, as you can see, and warms it up. Okay, so just different values, just a little different things here. Maybe I'll put some of that right in here, and we'll sort of sparkle that up just a bit, maybe. Okay, and maybe run it up here a bit. I don't know. However, okay, now what I want to do is just get plain yellow now. I'm not, I'm not cleaning my brush. And I don't know. Put that right here, maybe. See, and I'm using light pressure here, and I can really blend this out. Just creeping the bristles along the canvas just a little bit. And totally just blends in really well. Okay, and if you have just a little teeny bit of paint on the brush, you can really drive it in there, you know, like this when the paint runs off, and it'll just stir it up and just blend it right where you're at very nicely. And it won't cover up everything. It'll just blend together really nice and just gives that nice gradient and that fuzzy, out-of-focus, abstract look to it. Okay, let's do some more of this. And maybe just a touch of phthalo blue. Okay, a little bit more green. So, yeah, it's just more vibrant stuff here. Okay. I'll go around this here. See, I can kind of you know, do something like that, maybe. And again, I'll take some burnt umber. I'm sorry, raw umber. I always mix up my browns, as you know. Okay, and let's get kind of this gray. I don't know. Let's see a little bit more raw umber into that. I want this different value change over here a little bit. See, just kind of these dull, earthy tones with some vibrant yellows and stuff popping off here and there. Just kind of draws the eye in a little bit. Of course, the eye is really about the main focus on, you know, like our macaw. And that's really what we're focusing on. Okay. And, and... Let's see, let's take some blue now to that. Eh, maybe not that much. Well, I don't know, let's see. A little bit more raw umber into that blue. Okay, more white. Eh, a little lighter here, I want it really light. Okay, let's wipe some of that off the brush there. Okay, I'm thinking maybe something like that. Okay, so maybe a little bit right there. And I don't know. Now, I want to take more yellow now to that. Wipe a lot of that paint off the brush. And I just want to get some white now. And maybe a little bit more yellow to that. Let's see what I can do. All right, let's see. I'm going to go, I think, do something that value. Again, whatever value you want to choose, it's all good. Okay, and I'm just lightly again brushing out here. 
it just gives that nice fuzzy out of focus gradient blend you know abstract nice look to it okay i want some right here too i don't know there's like maybe some light hitting off his back okay you just lightly brushing this down it's just more background stuff okay and let's see i'll lighten some stuff up along here so see i'm going to just stick with this brush i think and i can do these like i think these bokeh light sun rays you know these little sun kisses that are shooting through the trees or wherever this parrot is at and really cool effects you can do anything okay and again if there's something you don't like take a value cover it over or knock it back and let whatever you want to see remain anything at any time and this is super cool and forgiving with this background especially because you can really practice this bokeh stuff or bokeh whatever however you pronounce it um, that blurry out of focus effect with these rat, uh, natural round bristle brushes because again if like I said with background it's just background and even if you don't like your background then you can just like I said take a value and cover over and just practice blending back and forth different colors and that really is a good practice for gradients and just overall just general blending really okay so I'm just kind of blending over just some of these things here see it look, kind of looks like light maybe sort of filtering in or infiltrating through the trees a little bit okay let's try that right here I don't know see and it just blends out and leave this transition and then it just gives that nice out of focus look to it see and obviously I'm pressing harder with the brush and then again very light pressure as I want to blend it out here Okay, so it's all not, it's all keeping the brush dry and it's all about your pressure and of course how much paint you're loading at one time. And I will say, do watch how much paint you load at a time on any brush because you can always load more of it when you get too much. It really can get difficult dealing with more paint than you want, especially when you're trying to blend and it's just getting kind of messy. <laughs> all right, so I just took a little yellow as you saw there. I'm just going to lightly... And I did put just a little paint on this. And of course it's dry. And yeah, I'm just taking this up. Kind of going around here. Maybe there's some glow, you know, from the light hitting some of this brush or this foliage or whatever. Okay, I can even come up here with some of that. Let's see and go around some of this. And that really adds a nice glow to some of that light. Just putting that around it. Okay, so all these cool effects and all these things you can practice and do however you want. Most of all, I hope you're enjoying the journey and the process as you do this. It should totally be fun and it's like a discovery, you know. Whenever I paint, it's like my colors, I know generally what I'm going to do, but it's always a discovery and it's always a, let's see what happens if I do this or if I mix that. And... I learn so much every time with every painting that I do, I feel like. Okay, so I've added some orange now and, of course, more yellow since I ran out. And I want to take some of this yellow and just a touch of this orange. Okay, just kind of something like this. And I didn't clean my brush. It's all good. But I kind of want this... Kind of more orangey yellow color here and again i'm going to wipe off a lot of that paint there okay so just taking this now blending that again light pressure heavier pressure i want this more covered see like that and say something like that okay 
And now let's see, I want to get some white now. I want this a little lighter. And I'll just go in here with that lighter value now. See heavier pressure with the brushes. I'm bending the bristles a bit. And then right out here. See, I'm not bending them really at all. I'm just blending it out. And don't be afraid to go into that other color. You really want to go into that other color. That's when it meets up with the other as you're giving little pressure like this. And that's where the gradient happens. And it just really does its thing super well like that. Okay, so again, stirring this up. See, and sometimes I'll turn my brush if I need to have more paint laid down somewhere. Maybe it's on the other side of the bristles there. So, yeah, I'll take that. Okay, so I want to wipe most of that paint off that brush now. And again, I want to go into titanium white because I want to brighten this area up here. Let's see. I'll just go like this. Okay, maybe just something like that. Okay, and let's see. And I'm going to drag this out. And I won't go back into the center because if I do, then I'll just end up blending this whole thing out again. And it won't really be all that effective. It'll be something I'll have to do again. So just blending it out, letting that color match up with it and fade in. And let's see. Okay, something like that, I'm thinking. Just kind of gives this glow and the shine of this light here happening super well like that. Okay, now I'm just going to get regular old yellow. And I don't know, I'll place that right here, I guess. Okay, less paint on the brush, so I'm kind of just going for it. Not worried about covering up really anything. Just kind of like that. I don't know. And let's see. How about I am going to go some more yellow now, just a touch of blue. So I want this green again. Okay, something like that. And I will put that I don't know, something like this. See, I'll lay it down and then I don't know, do this. Okay, maybe something like that. And let's see. I kind of want more blue. Uh, kind of right in here. A little bit darker. In there, and then without cleaning, I'm going to take now just a little bit more white. And I want to sparkle up this and have this shine out of here. See, and I'm just leaving that center alone. I'm just dragging it out towards the edges. And we got something kind of shining through there maybe a little bit. Okay, however. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I've got my palette knife and I'm going to take some of this well, actually, a lot of this raw umber and phthalo blue. And I'm just going to mix these up in just about equal parts. Essentially, this makes black when you mix these two. And I thought that this would be a more natural, uh, better looking black than if I were to use, say, permanent black. Just because permanent black tends to be very sudden. And I want more natural especially with nature and 
being that this is a bird with a background that's blurred out, it's really going to make the realism of this thing pop super good. And I don't know, I just thought that this black between these colors of raw umber and phthalo blue would be a more natural and better looking black for that reason. So, as you can see, it's pretty black. And when I put some white into here, like on the beak too, it's going to have a little small indication of a hint of some of that blue hue that you see when sunlight hits black sometimes, or like an animal's uh, black fur coat or whatever, you know what I mean? It just gives it that nice realistic hue to it. So I'm going to use my number 12 angle brush here. As you can see, the tip here, and this is to get around all the details. Of course, if I go inside of here, this is going to really cover up these lines and I'll lose this. So out here, I'm going to use my other natural uh, brush just because that's going to blend in. But along here will be what I use this, uh, this it'll be what I use the angle brush for. All right, so I'll start up here actually and not too worried about how perfect this is because, you know, of course it's a branch, so it doesn't have to be exact. So it's all good there. Okay, and I don't know. See, and I can just use the brush and push hard right here since I'm going to be filling it all in down this way. But all I got to do is just push and go up to the edge. And then just look, I can just go around this come back in here and see I got that nice tip with all those other bristles that are angled down out of the way and I can really get in here see like this and really just go around these little feet details super super nice without having to struggle about it you know what I mean this is, makes it really this angle brush makes it really easy to get around all these fine details without struggling and it being you know, all right, let's see. All right, so this is going to be the tail area, and pretty much in this area is really all I'm going to do. For the black, I don't know. So that's really all the details that I wanted to use this brush for is was around this part. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this angle brush off now. And I think I will drop to just a little bit smaller but not much of a natural round bristle brush so yeah with that said i'm going to take my number 10 now versus my number 12 and this will just help me get into this i don't know this little area a little bit smaller but i still can cover some ground with this so i'm going to load quite a bit of paint up on these bristles here and just start filling in down here where i want it the heaviest and the most first again as I get up here I want less paint to be able to easily blend into some of that okay so I'll just take this up right up in here Okay. I'm just really smashing that paint down into the canvas here. I want it laid down really well. Okay, bring this up.
Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to take just a little white. Just a teeny bit. I'm tapping a lot of that color off the brush. Okay, just a little bit. And I just want to go in here now. And I just want to blend this in to not only on this side, but take it up and blend it in as well here with this color. So I left this gap here for that. And just going to do something like that. See, that really gives it its out of focus. See, a little bit of paint left on the brush, and I'm really driving into the canvas here. Not too hard because I don't want to put in uh, dents into it, but, you know, I can push a little bit. And it just really blends that in nice like this. Okay, something like that. And I'll just do this all the way around. You know, like maybe right here. I don't know. You can choose however you want to do this. You can just blend just this straight color without the white in it if you want to even. It's all up to you. And if you kick something out again too far, take that darker value, cover back over. It's all good. Really have some fun, really practice, experiment. Go for it. A whole world waiting to be explored. All right, let's see. Let's go. I don't know. Maybe right here. See, I can take this wherever I want and blend it wherever and however. Doesn't matter. See that? It's all abstract background. Just want to be able to tell that he's in the trees somewhere, maybe in some jungle somewhere. I don't know. Okay, get more of that color and it's just gonna go like so. So I'm just kind of scratching that around, you know, no big deal. And what I'm gonna do now is go back into that green, a little white here. And let's see, right down in here, there's some background. I'm just gonna fill that in. Again, there will be solid lines here and here because that's the bird's feathers. He's in focus, which means I'm not gonna be doing this dry, fuzzy line brush stuff. It's gonna be a little bit of water on the brush and just normal solid line stuff so that'll really contrast nice against all this background okay i'm gonna smooth some of this out just a little bit okay just whatever however something there I don't know um, let's see I can fill in some of this you can see the canvas showing just a little bit here in some places this is where I want to you know clean that up or fill that in and then I want to clean this up just a little bit so yeah it's all good however it goes on that first coat 
I wouldn't even trip at all because that first coat is nothing. It's just to say, hey, this is where we're going to be painting here and we're going to be painting there. It's kind of like a tour before you start the job, you know what I mean? It's like you're getting your lowdown. You're looking at the blueprint. You're just kind of throwing stuff where it goes for now. And then coming back over it and eventually getting details all built up. But, yeah, this is super fun. I love doing this. Just kind of seeing what I can, how I can zing some of these lights and kind of make these things happen. Okay, so I want some more of that color. Oh, maybe it's a little sky color. Put that up here, maybe. Now let's get a little bit more white into that. Okay, yeah, there we go. See, and then again, just a little bit of pressure with the brush. See, it looks like little sun kisses and things hitting some brush and foliage already. Super cool. I love doing this stuff, like I said. Okay. Okay, maybe up here. Okay, just getting some more pigment on the brush here and fly go away. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. I think I want just a little bit of more sparkle in here. See, so you can do anything anytime. You can darken something, sparkle it, cover it up. Blend on top of whatever you want to do. Okay, a little bit more white. Well, a little bit too much. So if you get too much paint, I'm just wiping off the rest of it off the brush. And then I'm taking what's here and I'm dragging it out. See, just like that. We're right where we should be. Sometimes, you know, when you load too much paint, it's all good. Like I said, you can just sort of drag it out a little bit. And even if you have to drag out too much paint to dissipate it or, you know, even out your layer, even if it does go into some other values you didn't want to, it's fine. Again, just cover back over when that dries. And, yeah, just, you know, we live and learn. How much paint should I put this time versus last time? Can happen. Alrighty, so just getting these things filled in. See how much nicer this looks now without all that canvas showing. It really fills it in better that way. Okay, I'm going to take some of this yellow and raw umber and just want to fill in a little bit more right here. See, not worried about going into the bird too much. No problem. See, I don't know, something like that. Maybe a little bit of white right there. White makes this a little bit more opaque, so it's not so transparent as you saw there. It was kind of not wanting to lay down too well. But it's all good. See, I can just... I don't know. Looks like he kind of has a worm maybe in his mouth at the moment. But he won't soon. Okay, a little bit of dark value. Just a teeny bit. A little bit of dark value here. Just a teeny bit. I'm just going to tap that off. And I kind of want this a little darker back in here, I think. Okay. 
Okay. So for a little bit of shadow and dimension, I'm going to take a little bit of this dark value with some of this more raw umber to it and some cad yellow now. See, that makes a very dark green. Add yellow to that like that. Okay, and with this very, very little paint, I just kind of want to work some of this in here. See, it gives a little bit of dimension and shadow within some of this foliage that's out of focus. Just kind of makes it pop a little bit more and the highlights and all that. So, really want some contrast in a painting for sure. Get your lights and darks and have those really playing together. That really brings out more of a draw into the eye and just really wows the attention that much more. When these things kind of contrast a little bit in there, it just kind of draws in more. Okay, all this foliage and stuff. Okay, wherever. Maybe there's a little bit right here, I don't know. And see, so you can kind of use them to define, uh, define some of these bokeh little sun rays in here if you want. You can go kind of in between some. See, and then you can see two things happen in there. Just little things like that. Okay, I'm going to go into some more. And I'm going to go with that value just a little bit here and close some of this canvas up with some of that. Just wherever. But I did want some of that over here as well, just to kind of contrast some things on this side also. Okay, so I'll just stir up those hard lines a little bit and just kind of smooth them out like that, maybe. Okay. A little bit more pigment on the brush, not much. It's a very, very little paint. Okay, I just want to throw some little hints of shadow here and there. And of course, don't be afraid to throw in more shadow if you want to see more. It's up to you. Again, this is your painting, and you can definitely throw it around however. But one thing I will say, where you want things really bright, try to keep the dark out of those areas. If you do end up going into those areas, it's not that big a deal. You'll just have to cover up with a little bit more layers to cover the dark up with lighter values. But it totally can be done. Requires a little bit more time and paint, that's all. So, let's see. I'm thinking, I don't know, maybe something like that. And ran out of paint. Let me get just a teeny bit there. Okay, there's a little bit up here, I don't know. All right, so with a dry, clean brush here, again, this is my number 10 natural round bristle brush. I'm taking down just some titanium white, and not too much, but I do want some. And let's see, I'm going to go right here. And again, I want very, very, very little pressure out here. I have a, some paint on this brush, and what else I could do if I don't want to get any more paint on the outside let's say there's one I also want here so I'll go ahead and apply more pressure to get some of that uh, some more of that paint off my brush and as you can see blending is a little bit easier on this side with less paint there to work with see it's something like that Okay. I can even have these blend into each other a little bit, even right here, as it blends out. Okay. 
Okay. See, so that draws the eye in just a little bit more. Okay, maybe a little bit. Stick it in here. I'm going to shine this up a little bit brighter. Okay, just a little bit more white on the brush. And... All right, let's see. We have a couple right here. Okay, see, just very little paint on the brush, and I can really put it where I want it, the heaviest in the center, and it makes it super easy to blend out when you put just a teeny bit of paint at a time. And I can actually go back in now, see if it's not enough paint. At least I have my edges already blurred out, so I can just go in there with a little bit more white if I want to. And just kind of do that and get the center more vibrant and more saturated like that. And then just take it outside and blend into that already blended first time there. See, that really brings in some more illuminating light there. Okay. Get rid of some of these hard lines here. this out just a little bit more. Okay. Okay, so what I want to do now to sparkle up some of these lights, I want to take just a little bit of cad yellow. Not much, barely any. Okay, and I want to come in around here and put this nice little yellow glow around these that I just did and sort of go into this just a little bit and really just dust it into that white. See, and you can really make these leave, uh, look even brighter by giving it that yellow glow that travels outside like that. See, isn't that nice? Just like that, and then it just really uh, does something. <laughs> okay, a little bit more pigment on the brush, not much. And I'm going to go around this guy as well. Okay, just maybe something like this. Bring on some of this. Okay, without cleaning, I'm going to just take some titanium white, a little yellow into that, and it's a little build down with uh, some raw, what was that? I'm sorry, some raw umber. And I'm just going to sort of go like, I don't know. Like I said, you can do anything you want here. You can throw this around however, however and whenever. I'm sorry, not yellow, some white. <laughs> and I'll just go back in again. So maybe something like this. 
You can mess with that however much you want to do, but I think for me, I'm going to call that my background and I'll go ahead and get started now on blocking in this macaw parrot. Okay, so now that the background's on, I'm going to go ahead now and add to my palette here some phthalo green. And over here, this is fluorescent yellow, and I have fluorescent pink, and I'm only going to use these colors to make my yellow here more vibrant and pop a lot more because in the chest area here, there's going to be more of a yellow and a light that's hitting right there. So I just kind of want to make that pop off a little bit more. So these are totally optional. You don't have to use these. Um, this one, as you can see, runs a little bit and it is kind of thin. But again, it's just for the, the purpose of making this yellow a lot more vibrant. So I'm just going to start blocking in the general values where they go. Um, and once again, I'm going to be using my number 12 angle brush here to get these nice crisp lines against this fuzzy bokeh background here. And I'm going to start with a little bit of just a little green to start with. So I'm going to take some phthalo blue, a little yellow together. Okay, and with that, I'm just going to... Well, actually, you know what? I'm going to take some raw umber to that because I want to darken this green down. And let's see, I'll get more yellow. So just kind of blending this back and forth till I like the color that I'm looking for here. And I'm going to say something about like this. Okay, wiggling it, pulling through, and it makes that nice edge there was it really well and I can get in here very precisely and I'm just going to start like I said blocking in these general values so you can see right here I'm just going to start with this okay you can see this nice tip on this and no big deal Okay, so just kind of something like that to start off with. Okay, so it's actually going to change value from there. So I'm going to clean this off now. Okay, one more final rinse there, and I'm just kind of getting the excess water off, but I do want it damp because again, with a little bit of water, I can get those nice edges and I don't want them fuzz this time because the bird of course is in focus. So I'm going to go ahead now and take some of this phthalo blue. Okay. A little touch of phthalo green to that and some titanium white. And I'm thinking Maybe a little bit more white there. Maybe something like this. Okay, so that in here. I'm just gonna take this all the way around using the whole edge of the brush here as you can see. And I'm just going to block in, like I said, the general colors. I'm not going to worry about feather details or the final color. But this is generally, generally the value that's going to be placed here. So I'll just block this in, like I said. And I'll just bring it all the way to this right here. Okay, so OK, 
Okay, just going around all these little shapes here based on the image, the traceable. And again, don't forget to check out Patreon if you'd like help with the drawing process and the traceable that is available for all of my videos. So they're just going to go something like this. And I'll even, let's see, I'll come out here a little bit with some of this. Okay, notice I'm just kind of hashing it a little bit out. And I'm just kind of showing some feather details a little bit. Or not details, but just the overall basic shape, you know, where I'm going to place this and just kind of have these feathers doing these things. Okay, so back to blocking here. See, and then I can use the tip again, or the edge, I'm sorry, right here. And really just bend these bristles around these objects really well. Okay, I was going to start drawing out all the different um, feather details here, but I thought, no, I drew one and I said, no, I'm not going to, I'm going to do it freehand. What the heck? So, let's see, I'm going to do that. See, just bending the bristles up and just following this shape here. about that. So as you can see, some of my background didn't make it all the way, but that's all right. I mean, I'm going to go ahead and take those and um, I'll, I'll just come back in with background later. No big deal at all. As long as it's all fuzzed out out here, which it is, up here it's just going to be a solid uh, line anyways because it makes, like I said, the bird in focus. Okay, loading up more paint now and back to the block in here. Okay, try not to get too rough with this brush. I think what I'm going to do actually is keep it more on the outsides where the details are where I don't want it spilling into the background really. So with that I think I'm just going to do stuff like this. Okay, a little water there. Maybe a little bit too much water. That's okay. I can just come on a, uh, go on to it with another coat there once that dries. No thing at all. Okay, and right here. This is actually going to be a little bit more phthalo blue out there. Okay. Maybe a little bit darker here, a little bit more blue. Okay, just something like that, maybe. And, I don't know. So I'm going to take that black that I made, uh, a little bit more phthalo blue to it. And there we go. Just wiggle, wiggle, pull through. Makes a nice little edge there. And I will go ahead and down here like this. Okay. So 
See with that edge there, I can really get in there very nicely and precisely. Okay, I'm just going to get this excess paint, fill it in right here. Okay, so anything you want to do here is fine. Okay, just using the edge here to really shape this beak out here a little bit. And I'm going to turn my canvas just to get the correct angle here. A little bit more water on just the tip of the brush, not much. Okay, loading more paint. Get that nice edge loaded up there on it. And let's go down. Okay, just like that. Okay, just like that. See that? Okay, so do what you got to do if you have to turn your canvas. Definitely do so. Don't let anything tell you that the rule is you can't <laughs> turn your canvas. I don't know. There's something about that. I've talked to people before that say that, I don't know, these artists don't, you know, painters don't turn their canvases. They just say paint. I don't know. Okay, so just with the tip of it, you can see getting into things really nice like that. Okay, I'm going to load up some more pigment again. And continue on with this. Let's see, I'm going to go, I think about, right there. I don't, I don't want to go into this too much there. That's fine. Okay, so... I will strike a highlight down to separate these beaks a little bit, but for now, I'm not worried about it. It's just blocking, like I said. I'll get to the details when I get to them. But definitely got to have these base coats down before details, or it'll just be a very flat, very thin, weak, not very contrasting, not very vibrant, saturated, dimensional, and... That 3D and all that stuff just won't be there. So always, always build those foundations of base colors first. Okay, just rinsing or cleaning and rinsing off this number 12 angle brush here and getting the shape back into it. Okay, now I'm going to take now my number 6 flat brush and 
I'm going to start going in here again with general colors where they go. I'm going to add to my palette actually now a little bit of violet. So again, don't forget to check the description if you need to see a list of the colors and materials that I'm using. But again, I am calling them out as I go. So I'm going to take some of this black that I made and I'm going to go into some of this violet and mix it in. Okay, most of that color off my brush, pretty much all of it. And now I'm going to take just titanium white. And it's a very, very faint uh, lavender color that I'm going to use here. And with that, I'm just going to block in his face right here. Okay, a little bit more water on the brush there. Getting a little dry, so... Just a teeny bit of water and I can make this flow so much better. See that? And I can run this edges down better against this other stuff. Okay, just going around this eye here and wanting to keep that intact. Okay, so I recommend using your angle brush if you don't have a flat brush with all the bristles intact. You really want to be able to have nice clean edges around this stuff. Like around the eye, you know, stuff like that. But again, you can always paint back over it. And if you don't mind drawing it by, you know, freehand later or whatever. But I just kind of like to go around it to preserve it just so I don't have to do that. And just in case. All right, so up here. All right, just maybe something like that. Actually, you know what? I'm going to add some white on top of this because it's just a little too it's got too much lavender in it. I want it more light than that. So I'm going to go in. There we go. Something like that. That's more like it. See, you can always adjust colors. But because I have that lavender underneath, just putting plain white on top. And you can totally see it peeking through a little bit. And it really gives that very light, faint lavender color that I wanted after all. You can totally do that anytime, just like that. Okay, let's see. I'm going to finish putting that in, in this area here. Okay, just using the edge there of the flat brush, getting it filled in. Okay, just like that. All right. So now what I want to do is I want to take some of this orange. I want to take some of this fluorescent pink into it. And I kind of want to do something, well, a little bit of yellow in there too. A little bit more yellow actually. Orange will really take over if you're not careful with that. Okay, maybe something like this. Okay, not too heavy. Just loading up some. And, again, I'm just going to block in. I'm not looking for details yet. Just throwing that in. Fills in pretty quickly, actually. Okay, I just want a couple of streaks maybe in here like this. I don't know. No big thing. Okay, and...
Okay, I'm just going to throw this basically where it generally goes. Because I am going to change up values in here and just basically play them in here and just get them set for now so that I know the parameters of tones that I want to work in on each part of that to build up the texture and the three-dimensional you know, colors, the way they're going to play together to build up this feathery, you know, awesome beauty here. Okay, so I'm wiping most of that color off my brush now again, and I want to take just some yellow now, and I want to take some of this fluorescent yellow, and again, just a touch, barely any at all, just a teeny bit, and more cad yellow and more fluorescent yellow together. See, it really makes it more vibrant like this. And so if you don't have the fluorescent colors, you can just use orange and yellow and just put a little teeny bit of orange into your yellow and you can get this sort of orangey yellowish color like that. Okay, so we see a different value playing in here now. Okay, so maybe that comes down a little bit. See, I'm getting some of this orange in there again, which is fine. I'll just take some more of this fluorescent yellow. Seeing that warms it back up and gives that value change in there a little bit. You can just mix colors right here on your canvas if you need to anytime. And of course, cover it up if it's not mixed right the first time or whatever. So yeah, really just go for it. It's all good. Okay, something like that maybe, yeah. And it's going to be some of this vibrant orangey yellow right here. Happen on this part of his leg. Okay, and let's see, maybe a little bit in here. Okay, something like that. And I kind of want to adjust this a bit. See, I want this more vibrant. See, anytime, just all good. You can just adjust it whenever. Something like that, maybe. Okay, I don't know. However you want. Okay. Now I just want to get some more cad yellow and some more fluorescent yellow. And right in here, just maybe... Okay, let's get that right there. Maybe some more of that right in here. All right. Okay, a little bit more of this cat orange now. So, now what I want to do now what I want to do is I want to add just a teeny bit on my palette now, some magenta red here. So see, I like to bring out colors as I'm going so they don't just sit there and dry out. And especially if you live somewhere dry, you really want to wait, but where I live in the tropics and it's damp and wet, I don't, you know, I kind of can get away with that. But still, I like to bring them out when it's time. 
Okay, so I'm going to get some cat orange and some of this magenta together. You can see red more or less dulls and darkens a little bit. So a little bit more orange into this. Okay, so a little bit darker of an orange right in here. And see how I'm doing these little these little things like this. And just getting some, you know, the way the feathers are going to come together a little bit. So I'm just kind of preparing that just a little bit. You don't have to do that just yet if you don't want to. Again, we're just blocking. It's not really detail time yet, but just for the heck of it. Doesn't hurt to, I guess, make that preparation a little bit and give me something to work with, I guess, within some parameters of how these feathers are going to be shaped and kind of coming together, I guess, a little bit. So I thought, why not? Okay, so something like this. Okay, more paint. All right, so actually right here, it's going to be kind of a dark shadow. So I'm actually going to take some raw umber now into some of this orange. Well, it's a very dark orangey color. Well, maybe something like this. Okay, and I want to kind of go into here a little bit, see, like this. Okay, so I'm just bringing this shadow color now into some areas here. See around this wing maybe a little bit. And I don't want to go too far up into here because I'm going to change the shadow value in here where it's coming away from the blue value of the feathers. But in here I'll take this orangey, well mostly brown but a little orange in it, shadow color right here in this area. And right here where there's a separation Let's see, I'll play that shadow a little bit in here maybe, yeah, right there. All right, I'm going to take now some more of this orange, a little bit of this burnt, I'm sorry, raw umber, and I'm going to go continue down. Just kind of like, well, let's see. I'm going to get some more orange into that, actually. There we go. I just really want to do this. Okay, so I got my orange back, okay? And yeah, let's see. I'm going to go... Fill in the rest of the leg down here with that. Okay, just something maybe like that. All right, and I'm thinking now a little bit more yellow now to warm this color up. Okay, and we get this orange deal right in here. Something like that. Yep. 
Okay, and let's see, maybe. I don't know, something like that, maybe. Okay, so. I'm just going to go ahead and clean this number six flat brush off now. Go into some rinse jar and dry it off. And again, I like to do something like that to keep it intact, okay? Alrighty, now I'm going to be moving on to that same number six flat. I'm going to go back in and get some of this thalo blue, touch the thalo green, some titanium white. A little bit more white. Okay, maybe something like this. Okay, just this general blue color here for his wings out here. All right, so Okay, something like that maybe and I'm gonna go another coat over some of this thinner stuff here that I put down first okay and also in here all right let's see I'm thinking Oh, what am I thinking? Right here. Okay, a little blue streak there. Maybe a little bit right here. Okay, just kind of something like that. Okay, and again, another coat of this over these wings here. I'm going to go to a smaller now, number four flat brush to get in here now a little bit more. And I want to finish continuing to block in all the different things. So I'm going to take now some violet again and titanium white. And I want to get some burnt umber, I'm sorry, raw umber into there. Always sand the browns off. It's all good though. <laughs> Okay, so I'm thinking something like this, just to block in for now. Um, these outer feathers here, I'm going to kind of streak that here, kind of like this. And again, I'm just getting their general shape. I'm not worried about the details and all that yet. Okay, so something like this, and okay, a little bit more of that color. 
Okay, let's see. Just a little bit of water on my brush. I really want to get that to flow a little bit more. Okay. So, there we go. Showing up a little bit better as well. Okay, so. All right, something like that, I'm thinking. Okay, and without cleaning, I am going to go back into that black that I made. Okay, and... Just kind of something like that. All right, no big deal. Just blocking. Okay, so now I'm going to take again that blue color that I made, the phthalo green. And let's see. I don't know, something like this again. Okay, and Right in here, I'm going to shape this a little bit more here, some feather stuff. And I just kind of wanted to fill that in just a bit more. Maybe something like that. Okay, so now I want to add into this some of this black into that blue mixture that I made. And this is going to be a shadow color in here, so I'll just block that in right in here. See that? See, that's some shadow stuff that we can create. Just some of that. I'll also put that right in here. Okay. okay, so just throwing this shadow color in, I'm going to add actually a little bit more of this black to it. Okay, so that raw umber and phthalo blue, I tell you, it really makes a nice black there, and it makes it a very natural looking black. Okay, and then in here as well, put that color in. Color in the rest of this back tail here. Okay, a little bit more water onto that brush. You can see it getting dried out there. But no worries, it's just fine. So a little bit more raw umber now into this black here. So it's kind of a brown color sort of in the back here a little bit. Okay, something like this.
Okay, like that for the edge of that. And let's see. I think I'll put this dark shadow color right in here. Just sort of blend that up a little bit into here. Okay, something like that maybe. And then I kind of want to come in and do stuff like this. So you can see a little bit of feather stuff happening maybe like this. All right. This goes up, I don't know, all right, something like that I think. All right, so I'm gonna clean this brush now again. And after that, I'm gonna take now a little bit of this yellow, just a little bit of this black, not much, not much at all. And just a teeny, teeny bit of this orange. So let's see, it's this dulled down yellowish color here yellow orangey color okay kind of a mustard yellow i think i'd say okay so with that i'm going to come down here and i just want to do something like this i'm just going to block in this whole thing with this value Let's see, let's go right here, block in right there, this whole thing pretty much. All right, cleaning this brush now. And I did forget to put a little bit of background here and I wanted also some more dark value in here. So let's see, I'm gonna go a little bit of blue, a little bit of green, some titanium white. Okay, something like that maybe. And I'm just going to use the edge of the flat brush here really well just to get around everything pretty decently here. Okay. Okay, I'm going to wipe that paint off the brush. Just a little bit of titanium white now. And right in here, just a little light zing play here on the background. I don't know. There we go. Something like that just kind of makes it more blend in. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and wipe that color off my brush now. I'm going to go back and grab this blue and this thalo green mixture here. Mostly thalo blue and, of course, titanium white. Let's bring that up a bit. Okay, something like that and I wanted to get right here as well there's some feather stuff
Okay, so something like that. And let's see. Again, just kind of put that in here. Okay, gonna clean that again. All that color off, and I'm gonna get some of this dark value now. And I wanna go kind of back in here a little bit. And just sort of blend this down. I don't want to take it all the way. And then in right in here, okay, just some darker values for shadow play in here. Okay, so right there, a little bit more of that pigment on my brush. See, I want it a little darker here. All right. Now, without cleaning, I'm just going to take some violet with some of that black that I made on it and now titanium white. Okay, and with this, I'm going to block in his feet and his claws here, more or less. Let's see. And actually, you know what? I want a little bit darker. I want a little bit more color into that. Okay, I'm thinking something like that. Yeah. Well, actually, you know what? Even more. There we go. Cause there's just, I feel like there's this like dark under t underneath tone. Okay, something like that, I'm thinking. All right, so let's do, do the same over here and just get the general value of colors where they go. Always looks like a kaleidoscope. Always will look like a kaleidoscope every time that you do this first coat. Acrylic paints, that's the way they are, I tell you. All right, I'm thinking something like this. Starting to get somewhere as far as filled in so I can see what I'm working with and where I'm at and all that. All right, I'm going to take now just a little bit of raw umber and some yellow together. A little bit of phthalo blue now. Okay, this black that I made. And some white now to that. And let's go like this. Okay, this value and some more background right here. That kind of mess. But again, hard lines against this bird right here, of course, because the bird's in focus. Okay, so we'll do something like that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and rinse that out again. And 
let's fill in just a tiny little area of his wing here with that green, phthalo green and phthalo blue. Okay, something like this. And bringing that down. Okay, something like that, I'm thinking, yeah. All right. All right, back to some more of that little bit of green there for the background. Okay, something like that, I'm thinking. Okay, cleaning that brush off again. And you know what I want to do to make that show up a little bit better here is I want to go around his talon here because it is black and it won't show up very well, of course, on this dark area down here. So I think I'm just going to kind of just go something all together like this. Maybe this is like a certain leaf or something behind them. Big jungle leaf or something. Okay, something like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take again that raw umber and phthalo blue. Get some black on that. Okay, and right here, I'm gonna define what, or I'm sorry, where his talon is here, this claw of his. And again, just using the edge of the brush, as you can see there. Seeing I can do that just fine. And then over here, all right, something like that. It just has his his claws going down like that. All right, and then in here. A little bit of shadow between these. Okay, and then right in here as well. A little bit of shadow right here. All right, and the shadow. So see, it's building some t uh, texture and dimension, and all that 3D stuff starting to happen a little bit. Yeah. Okay. And okay, so what I'm going to do now is block in this branch that he's sitting on. I'm just going to take some cad orange and some raw umber to that, and some titanium white and a little bit of yellow to it. Okay, I'm thinking maybe something like this. Yeah, perfect. Just this like off orange color here, a little dulled down by some raw umber, like I said, and some titanium white to lighten it. And this is a great color right here that I find to block in for this little branchy dude that he's sitting on here. Okay, and again, not trying to fuzz any lines out for this branch because it is in focus. And I really like these paintings that have the bokeh and the in focus effect. It's just another element that contrasts the picture along with lights and shadows and all that. Just another thing to draw the eye in. And to me, I just really enjoy doing that and 
bring in these effects together like this and these contrasting things. Okay, I'm just getting a little bit more water into this color here to block the sand a little better. Yeah, see how better that flows? How much better it flows, I should say. All right, let's see. See, and also you can you can tell where the feet are a lot more when things are blocked in. So that's another another good thing to getting everything filled in. And everything starts to come together, and you start to see where things should be and all that. So right on, right on. Just getting that white filled in. And I think I'm just going to block all this in. What the heck? With this color. I'll do the details where I do them. At least I can see where I want to do them. With these lines, I can still see through a little bit. Alrighty, so I'm going to clean that number four flat brush now and dry it off. And I'll come back in now with this. Okay, put that back like it was. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a smaller number six natural round bristle brush to do some things in here on the tail. And what I want to do is take a little raw umber and maybe just you know just a teeny bit i'll just tap it off and i just kind of want to go in here now and just sort of streak in with a very dry brush very little paint on the brush and just kind of do these little these little things and just kind of like this Start making these little, I don't know, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> these little shadows and just stuff inside the, the uh, tail here that really bring it out. Okay, just kind of following around like this. Seeing that just kind of add some realistic look to his feathers there a little bit yeah okay now <clears throat> i'm going to take now just a little bit more raw umber and phthalo blue okay get that dark value going and kind of want to go something like this I don't know, I'm just kind of adding some shadow and depth in here like this. I'm just kind of scratching that in. You can use your finger if it's too heavy in somewhere, some areas. You can also use this yellow color too from before and knock back and settle back a little bit too it's all good okay and see so fuzzy in some areas dark and heavier in others and it just kind of brings this variety and realization and depth and all that to it okay gives it some life in that way okay so Okay, going over that blue, I just kind of wanted more of that than, than that blue. So see, anytime I can just adjust something. Okay, so without cleaning, I'm actually going to get 
just a little bit more yellow here. Not much, just a little. Okay, and I'm going to take some of that and take some white. Take just a teeny bit of this orange into it, actually. Okay, and I want to just kind of knock back just some of this. I still got that dark value in there, as you can see, a little bit. And I'm just sort of knocking back and blending a little bit as I do that, too, a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to let this dry. That way it doesn't get too smeared out. And then I'll come in there with some more yellowish orangey color that I did before and knock back some of this and smooth it out and blend in with just some more nicer lines. So I'll let that sit for a minute. I want to take my number two small flat brush here. And I want to fill in the eye now just a little. So with that, I'm going to take a little bit of this black that I made. Most of it off my brush. I want mostly titanium white. And I'm going to do something, I think something about like this. Just going to fill this in generally like this. Okay, and I'm going to clean that off. All right, I'm going to take my script liner now and do some details around the eye. So I'm going to take that same black. So I'm going to get some blue, some brown. Lots of water on my script liner brush. Okay, so... I'm going to pull it. As I pull it, I'm going to turn it. I pull through it to a nice point. Okay, something nice and sharp. And what I want to do is go kind of like this. Okay, something Maybe like that. Okay, so however, just kind of go around this. I kind of gave this little extra bristle action here. As you can see, I made this come out like that a little bit for some just added detail for his eye there. So we're just going around it. I'm just. If you don't want to use a script liner, it can be a little ta uh, challenging at first. If you're not used to using one, I would use your angle brush then, just the tip on it. That would be ideal as well. But um, for me personally, I've used script liners enough. I feel like I can, I feel good doing it. I don't know, it's fine with me. Okay, something like that, and then I'm thinking for this pupil, I'll just use a script liner again, and I don't know. Okay, maybe something like that. Okay guys, so I went ahead and took a day off and I'm back. This is completely dry of course, and I'm gonna continue building up the layers on top of this blocking stuff that I've done. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my number four flat brush here and I've reloaded my palette. So again, that's Thalo Blue, Thalo Green, Raw Umber, Cad Yellow, this is Fluorescent Yellow, Fluorescent Pink, Cad Orange, Violet, Magenta Red, and of course, Titanium White as always. Okay, so I'm going to go in again and do another coat and block in. You can see there's little openings here. The canvas didn't get covered all the way. That's no big deal. This is what second coats and third coats and all that is for is to fill this in and really just 
make it more solid and saturated and all that good stuff. So I'm going to go ahead again and take some of this thalo blue and a little of this thalo green and titanium white. Bring that up and I'm going to continue with this vibrant turquoisey blue color. Okay, and let's go one more time. Just going to block in another layer yet. Okay, just using the edge of the brush again up here. I can really lay down these nice edges. And again, we want these crisp edges against this fuzzy stuff for the bird to be in focus. And a little bit of water on the brush is ideal. If it's too dry, it will render you a very fuzzy line and could start to make the bird like it's also out of focus, which if you want to do that, that's fine. That's nothing wrong with that. Maybe do this whole thing in bokeh if you want. But I think it's cool for me personally to have these in focus things contrasting off of these out of focus elements in a picture that really draws the eye in that much more. The more contrast and the more you can bring those in the more wild and the more entertained the eye will be. But it's all up to you. Again, you're painting. You do what you like to do and enjoy the journey. That's the biggest thing of all. You want to enjoy what you're doing. Okay, as you can see, I'm really just filling in these nice with these openings here on the canvas really well. This second coat here. Okay, I'll even go over some of it like that in these dark areas a little bit, all good. Kind of settles them down a little bit anyways, makes it more natural looking that way. So you know, just kind of do something like that, see? Oh, something like that. Okay, loading up some more paint. All right, and on this side too, on the left over here, a little bit of his wing here. Okay, I'm gonna clean this number four flat brush off. I'm gonna go into my clean water and then into my final rinse jar. Yeah, gets all that paint off really well and just kind of dry it off just a little bit but I want it a little damp okay and I'm gonna go ahead once again and let's get some violet okay a little bit of this raw umber to it just to dull that down just a little bit there okay most of that color off my brush and as I take titanium white it's gonna be very light again See that? A very muted, very light lavender color here. And I want to go back in here. And just kind of get this. And I want to get really careful around the eye. If I do go into that dark value and cover it a little bit, no problem. But again, if you don't have nice bristles on a flat brush, I do recommend an angle brush again with that fine tip on it. It really helps to get into these nice areas again. And see, just like this, I have this new brush, so... I can really control all of my strokes and everything in these small areas and really get around everything nice without covering it up or having it smear into another place like this eye right here. I don't want to cover. I want that very solid and to pop off of this very distinct part of his fe of one of his features on his face here. Okay, so just like this. Okay, just kind of fills it in more, makes it more vibrant and saturated and all of that. Okay, I'm cleaning that off again. Rinse jar once again. Getting the excess water off just a little bit. 
Okay, so now we're ready to go with more values. Okay, so in here, I kind of want to go on top of this with a little bit different value, but I did want this vibrant stuff to kind of show through just a little bit. So I'm going to take some cad orange now and just a little bit of cad yellow to that. And that just more or less warms up the orange a bit. And just kind of something like this. And I'll kind of do something like this. And I'll just kind of start filling this in again. Okay, kind of something like that. And I want to stay kind of on the edge here. And I want it more of a, a warmer yellowish orange in and through here. So I'll leave that alone for just a sec. Okay, and now I'm going to wipe most of that paint off the brush. So I'm not cleaning it just yet because I do want just some orange in there. And now a little bit of yellow and a little touch of this uh, fluorescent yellow in here. So as you can see, it really gives it more of a yellowish orange in this regard. Okay, maybe a little bit more of that fluorescent. Okay. And right in here, as you can see, changes up that value just a little bit more. And I'll get the details. Like I said, I just want to block in and uh, really fill in and make solid these base colors before I start putting values and shadows and all those things on and highlights because I really want to blast off of this base color to be able to give that contrast a very full and very strong painting in that regard and really bring in the eye and really be able to tell the details right off the bat and have it just go, wow, look at the feathers, look at the colors. So definitely need those things in place. Okay, it's a little bit more orange than I want, but that's okay. See, I'm just wiping the paint off the brush just a little bit. And I do have a little cloth on my table that I'm using for that. And I'm gonna just get pure yellow or this cad yellow alone. A little bit more of this fluorescent yellow in there. Okay, I'm not going to clean the brush. Like I said, I want just a teeny bit of that orange in there, but that's what happens when I do this. See, it gives it more of that yellow look in here a little bit more. And what you might find with yellow is it's a very transparent color and it takes a few layers to get yellow to show up. So what's, what you can do is really just allow this to dry and come back in. If you don't want to wait for it to dry, then you can always use a hair dryer on medium heat and it'll dry it within a couple of minutes or so really quick. So I'm going to let that dry because I got more places to work and it dries fast enough that I can get other things filled in while that's doing that. So I'm going to continue with this yellow and or the two yellows, the fluorescent and the regular cad yellow here. And I'm going to continue on, like I said, kind of more right in here. It's more yellowish, even a little bit up here a little bit. Okay, so just like this. Okay, and again, filling in these little areas where the canvas didn't get covered all the way. All right, something like that. Okay, and as you can see these little hashes that I did here like this, it really set the stage for some feather details so when I come back in I have something to really work with there just little things and again you don't have to do that right away with base color it's just put the color where it goes for now and do details later but I just thought I'd kind of prepare a little something so just kind of stirring this value up just kind of irregularly just kind of have these all play together you can see it's more orangey and more yellow in some areas that's what we want just to build up these values and have them play together to start showing dimension and texture and all of that good stuff. So I'm not going to clean my brush again and I'm going to take more of this cat orange here. 
And let's see, I want just a teeny bit of this fluorescent pink in with this orange. I think it just makes it more vibrant. And now a little bit, just a touch of this magenta red. And red is a duller, so it just darkens it down just a little bit more. Okay, kind of like that. And I'll go back in here. See, just kind of something like so. And I can work this back up into here where it kind of got faded out a little bit and solidify this some more. See, like that. It's all good. See, and I can even come in here and just sort of do something like this. Just have some of this showing up in here. Okay, maybe there's something like that. So we start to build the body here a little bit. Okay. And I'll even go down here on this dark value just a little bit, see if I can settle that down a bit. Yeah, like that. Let's see, I'm thinking now, what I want to do is take some raw umber now, and I want some more orange to that, so it's a very, it's a dulled down orange for sure, and maybe a little yellow to that, I don't know, let's see, yeah, it warms it up a bit, so. Okay, and I haven't cleaned my brush yet. Just kind of letting these colors come together a little bit. And I think I'm going to start sort of building on some of these details a little bit. So I'm just going to sort of go like this and kind of make these crevices and shadows in here. And in a way, you could say that this is still blocking stages even with the details because with details, it's going to look like it's not going to look like it should just yet, but again, when I get the colors established and then I start going over this by settling down some of these with other values on top, it'll start to play in and look more natural and the way that it should instead of all these kaleidoscope colors where you can't really see the realistic takeoff in that. So I'm just going to keep going like this and see I'm hashing like this you can see these little breaks in here that's to give that feather indication and I'm just using the edge of the flat brush to do stuff like this so you can just kind of see I'm using even the corner of it you can kind of like foliage in a way you could say so I'm gonna go ahead with this color now and I'm gonna continue just kind of doing some things in here just kind of like this. Okay, maybe up here a little bit, I don't know. Just some little things. And also over here. Okay, just don't, I would say don't do solid lines, just do these little, you know. That'll keep that feather detail alive and really make for nice, a nice realistic looking bird in that way. Okay, and something like that maybe. Okay, and in here on top of some of this and I'm thinking there's two chicken breasts right here or bird breasts <laughs> uh, I'm gonna do this little separation here See, like that okay so 
kind of letting these values just kind of play in. It just shows shadow and uh, depth and dimension when I put these darker values in, how there's three dimensional look that's starting to happen. So this is the build, the start of that. Let's see, I'll even go like this. So you just hash right down here in this shadow area where between his foot and the rest of his body there where it comes together. Okay, so we're building some 3D stuff here now. And I'm just going to kind of do something like this. You know, I don't know, something like that maybe. Okay, and run underneath here like this. Really contrasts with these darker shadows and brings out those folds and gives it more of a lift there on his body, making it more 3D. Okay, doing this kind of stuff. And again, as I build this up, this is going to start to look more natural. And it probably just looks like colors just kind of thrown in there for now, which is exactly what we want to do right now. But as you know with acrylics, it takes some layers to build up. Okay, loading some more paint. And I'll just continue on here. All right. Okay, a little bit more raw umber now into my mix. And right in here, you can see it's a little darker. And that just really enhances that shadow and three dimension pop to it. All right. So filling in again, this canvas area that didn't get filled in all the way. All right, and then back in here too. So as your brush gets wide because you're painting with it, you can see the bristles kind of came together and kind of almost made a round brush out of that, but that's okay. I can just go back in, load it, wiggle it as I go through it and then pull it through and see we're back on that nice edge again. And with that, I can use the edge of it once again and I can go, see that, just like that. So you know we got these nice feather details starting to show up here. Okay, I'm just gonna reload my bristles again. See, whenever it gets away from you, it's all good. You just reload and you are ready to go. Okay, even right here I can do something like that maybe. Okay, load it up again. Okay, see something like that. Okay, so just building that up, I'm going to work these colors back and forth between the highlights, the base color, and even highlights that I'm going to put on here. And of course, with like I said, with all those playing together and the layers building up together in that, it just will start to take off. Okay, so I'm not going to clean my brush. I'm going to take some raw umber and phthalo blue together. As you know, that essentially makes our darkest value in this painting pretty close to black. And 
let's just go in here. And so right in here, you can see how much darker that is here as compared to here. I wanted this a little darker. Just pops it more, gives it more shadow, and again, more dimension, three-dimensional look to it. All right, so getting this here on the shadow. And it's also the color of the back of his feathers here. They're just dark like this, so. See, that really pops it out against this blue even more. Okay, so I'm going to take that same dark value. Start working that in to some shadow areas here. Okay, so something like that. And I'm even going to come in here with some of these details like this. See, I get the edge of the brush here. And I can really get these nice little feather details like that. See, and I've just added one there. And then I can add, see, maybe something like this. Do these little shapes here, like just however you want. If you don't like something, again, take that other value and knock back any of these shadows that you don't like with this other blue. And you can even use it to define if something's too thick or something and thin something out. Anything you want to do. So really just have some fun. Again, this is another great lesson where you can really get away with a lot. And like I said, in the background, you can practice doing bokeh out of focus and blending and gradients because you can cover this. And it was just background. And then this, because you can push colors around and change anything, can really just get better at the drawing maybe and just placing values together and really seeing what you can do and all the different shapes that you want to create for his feathers and all of that. So... It's a really excellent, excellent forgiving lesson. Very rewarding. Even if you've painted before, it's still fun and rewarding. And for beginners, super excellent to learn many things that you'll use in just about every painting that you do. So I feel like this one was a very well-rounded lesson as far as teaching all that and helping to get more experience with just different aspects of painting that are involved with this in a very forgiving way that allows you to learn if you didn't do it right the first time. And I say get in there and really learn this thing. This is going to really teach a lot and really make a place for you to get better. And I just love these kind of paintings. Okay, so I'm just going down. Just kind of getting all that rest of that white there if the canvas filled in that wasn't filled in all the way yet. See in these little areas. Okay, and let's see. Let's go with maybe down here. I don't know, however, you can really change up these feathers any way you want. So just kind of experiment. As long as I say we're in the parameters of where we need to be, you can really mess around and make these feathers however you want. And there's really no right or wrong. Just follow the body shape. You know, like with this shadow, I don't want to jog it over like this because that might look kind of weird. But I'm just following, you know, the general shape and the curvature of him to bring these in. And again, I can cover it up if I don't like it. If I do accidentally put an angle on some of these that aren't right, maybe. I don't know. But it's no big deal. Okay, so just maybe something like that. I don't know. See, we're starting to build up all this 3D effect. And these shadows are really playing nice in here. Starting to look all right. Okay, so I might even throw some in here like this, see? Right in here, I can, I don't know, do something maybe like this. See, and now I've added more feather there. 
and maybe you know maybe something like that okay now I'll put a little bit of the shadow play back in these lavender colored ones back here of this feathers there see I'm using very little pressure on the paint on, on the brush and I can create all these cool little things all right so something like that a little bit more shadow play maybe okay and I'm gonna fill some of this in see so it looks like a little shadow is kind of casting maybe over this, this feather here, just dragging this down a little bit further and very little pressure on the paint, on the brush, <laughs> very little pressure on the brush with the paint. And I can just sort of fade this down. See, kind of like that. It looks like a little shadow play maybe happening just a little bit maybe. All right, so. And then right here, of course, too. There's a little shadow and that brings in lift and shows feathers coming over these feathers a little bit with that. Okay, and then maybe right here. All right, I wanna solidify this a little bit more. And it's all good, I can just I will say with a dark value now, you want to be careful with your dark values, like here on the beak and in here a little bit, because like I said, when dark values go over into light values that you didn't want there, it takes a little bit more time and paint and layers and all that to cover back over these dark values. But when it comes to lights going into darks, all good, because as you know, darks can cover over lights of the, uh, the very first coat and you're safe in that regard. So. Just depends on what is going on and what you're taking a color to and you know how cautious you want to be. So again, if you do end up spilling in, it's not the end of the world. It just takes, like I said, a little bit more time and paint and layers, but it can be done. But just to save that grief, I would say be careful when the darks are near lights where you want to contain them in the area that you want it to be. Okay, so very light pressure right here. I don't want this too dark out here. So just kind of right there. Okay, a little separation in his neck there. Okay, I don't know, streaking some things here and there. Okay, and then right here, I want it dark again. There's that separation right here with shadow between this wing here and gives that uh, wing lift between his body and his wing out here with this dark shadow color okay so i'm just kind of hitting this okay and it comes up a little bit right here i'm thinking Okay, turning my brush over and as you can see finding new paint there just a little bit more and really using all the paint on this brush and not letting any of it dry on it or waste any of it rather okay so what I can do in here is do these little tiny little detailed feathers by putting shadows where they are here so as you can see like that and then it's going to Sort of do something like this. Okay. And having these come down. And 
Okay, so we get a little wing action in there, a little feather separations. Super cool like that. Okay, and just filling in this area a little bit more. Okay, so now he's got a little lift there. And let's see. Gonna darken this area here. Just sort of lightly brush this up onto here a little bit, maybe. Just to show a little shadow play maybe happening on the bottom part of his body here. Okay, and then darker down in here to show that shadow really getting darker as it comes down. Okay, and again, filling in all that canvas there, that little bit that didn't get filled. All right. And now, right here, see this color? of his foot kind of got lost into the shadow color that I had here. But again, just blocking stages, I wasn't worried. Here we go. I'm going to separate that now with this darker value. And we'll start to see where the shadow and where his foot actually is. See, just like that. See, and now you can tell more what's going on there. See, so it's all good. You block in, we adjust colors, we push them around, we cover something if we don't like it, and as we do that and build it up with all that happening, it really just comes together and all of the definition and details really come to life with all these values that are playing together and using being used to define where things are and where they go and all that. So what I'm going to do now is take some of that shadow color in here and just continue to work this shadow color to build some of these details and define you know the feathers and all of that where these things go okay I'll get down here again so that down there Okay, getting that definition going on that. All right. And now I want to take that same dark value and really just define some of these places. See, and that really cleans that up, makes it super nice. Okay, kind of like that. All right. Okay, so see something like this, I get a little bit more definition and I can even sort of brush this through and smooth this out a little bit maybe. Okay, so we get these more definitive feathers and their colors where they go and how they work together in nature. So it's not just some smeared mess. See, you can always knock back the smeared mess and really define and like I said, clean everything up anytime super forgiving acrylics I tell you it's no worries all right so Bob Ross used to say oh maybe you've done some paintings before and you found that you were mixing mud well you can mix mud with acrylics but they really have to be wet and you gotta really not let them dry 
to mix mud but other than that as you know with these because they dry so fast there really is no mud uh, mud disasters you don't have to live with anything you can go work on something else and come back and just cover over something like it never happened no mud nothing but as you know with acrylics the downside is you have to put more than one layer and keep building it up whereas oils you know they they kind of do everything all at once and you don't have to work as much at them but you do have to live with what you do and that's where if you're not satisfied and you continue to piddle the painting to death the oil world will take you on a mud mission and that's not fun so pros and cons definitely do what you like to do i've done both and honestly i like both i like the bob ross style stuff but i really really love acrylics because there's for me so many other things i can paint and just the grace and the forgiveness you find in acrylics i'm telling you when you do these and how many chances you're allowed to fix a mistake or correct something it's pretty cool so let's see i'm gonna start now with all that, I'm going to continue on with this shadow and just continue building these shadows in here. And it's a little darker in here on the shadows, but up here between the feathers, it's going to be a lighter value because more sun's coming down and hitting his head. And we're down here, it's more dark. So, you know, these things too, with the shadow colors changing like that, it really shows the 3D effect and how realistic this would look brings all that out. You really want uh, your values to change colors as you work along an object or a bird or animal or whatever it is you're doing. Because with the same value everywhere, that's when things get flat and boring and you lose that 3D and that interest and it just more or less, it more or less looks like a picture that somebody tried to do and you can see what it is, but it's just kind of, eh, yeah, versus, wow, look how cool and realistic that looks. It's all about the values and the colors. That's what gives it oh, all that to it. So I say painting is not really drawing. It's really about mixing colors and putting them where they go. And there's some brush, tech, uh, brush stroke techniques, of course, too, but really simple. So I'm going to load this dark value back up again on my number four flat brush here, as you can see. I'm going to continue, like I said, with this shadow color stuff. And let's see, I'm going to go maybe out like that. And then I don't know, something, maybe something like this. And something maybe like that and let's see I don't know just kind of wherever so you can get all these nice little things in here like this and it really just takes off You're just using the edge or the corner of the brush here. You just get more stuff like that. All right, so we really see this taken off and super well here. Yeah, you can put some more of this over here. See, it really just brings that in so nice okay so down here now I can go kind of something maybe I don't know, like that okay gonna one more time load up some more paint there get my bristles together and OK, 
Okay, so it breaks this up a little bit. You can see more feather stuff happening instead of just one plain color going through there where it looks like it just kind of turned into something. So keeping those feather details alive. And now let's see. What I want to do, maybe get a little bit of this color up in here just to show. All right. Okay, I'm cleaning off that number four flat brush now, rinsing it again, and getting it back to its original state. So there's a little bit of orange left in there. I'm going to go ahead and do that one more time. So I've got this jar with these raised rubber pegs that are all different shapes and sizes, and it really helps to knock the paint off the brush. And then, of course, I go on, like I said, to my final rinse jar. And there we go. Perfect. So it's all off. So now I'm going to take my number two flat brush here and I'm going to start changing values from this dark shadow to a different value for the shadows up here to start making some feather details. So with that, I'm going to take phthalo blue and I think actually I'm gonna take more phthalo green this time. What I wanna do first is, I really want to lighten up the value of this base coat a little bit more. And then I can go in there with my darker turquoise shadow color in between this right here. And that will make this look more realistic with the sun hitting them and how that fades down. So up here, this is really more the color that I wanted, but I did want this underneath coat still because it's going to really help to play in here and just really lift this color off of this that much more, I think. Okay, so just kind of playing this into this value here that I have on his head. something like this see the more light up here hitting them so this value changes a little bit see and I'm just kind of doing this hash mark because it just kind of sets the stage I think for getting ready to put feathers on them you know in that way So as I get out here, I just kind of want to wisp out some of these little feather things here that kind of stick out. I don't want a hard line. So I just kind of did that just kind of as a guide to show about where his head would end and where the feathers would be. But I do want to put some detail into that a little bit. So I'm going to go kind of like this and, you know, stuff like that. So... I can come in here now and hash in some of this stuff like this, like I said, and really show his feathers this way. Okay, and it looks like little feathers are ready with this blue in between here. And I'll just go ahead and use that. And I will save on doing some more shadow stuff in this area that will already be done for me with this blue here. Okay, so like this. And some of that even on here. See these little detail things, you can just hash them on top of all this stuff. And it really starts to show his feather details a little bit like that. See, just like that. And with that same value, before I go back to the value, uh, the shadow value up top of his head, I'm going to continue to work this highlight color in now while I got it. 
so I don't have to jump back and forth too many times. And I'm just going to hit the highlighted areas on his feathers with this. This is really going to pop and shine this up even more. So like right here where light's more playing off them and zinging. See, just kind of something like that. And as I get down here, just very light pressure on the brush, see? And I want to kind of fade that into that black, just a little, or I'm sorry, this darker blue here and not bring it all the way over because the light's hitting more on the outside and then it fades off and then it's a darker blue in here where there's not as much sun. So again, working these value changes and showing where light play is happening and in turn that is what builds the realistic dimension and 3D look to them is by changing up these values to tell the story to the eye that yeah, there's more light here, not as much in here and it just brings his whole realistic body to life that way. So now let's go on this side a little bit. Okay, just something like this. Streaking this down a little. And again, not bringing it all the way down, but letting it fade down into that blue so that it's darker down here to show that light play and that travel. Okay, and then right here, there's more of this light play hitting his feathers here. All right. Maybe a little sneaking light right here. Maybe that really brings out some more 3D effect. Maybe a little bit down in here. I don't know. Okay. And a little bit because there's light coming on this side as well. Maybe there's some right here. See, and I can also, when I come in here with this value, if I didn't like the way my wings were shaped, maybe with the shadow, when I come back in with highlights or whatever, I can always use this color too to go into that shadow and define his wings with this color as well. See, so that's again very forgiving nature of these paints. And you can do anything you want anytime. No need to panic. Totally chill, relax, it's all good. Okay, so I don't want to go in here with that light value again because the light's more out here. So maybe. We're going to have striking highlight there. So let me see if I can grab maybe a little bit more titanium white. Let's see, we'll lighten this up a bit. Get these popping just a little bit more. And boom, see that? Really shows light zinging off of him right there. And again, maybe a little bit lighter right there. And again, like I said, define his wings, or his feathers on his wings, I should say. And it's all happening here. It's really taking off. See, something like that. And maybe a little light sneaking right there. I don't know. Something like that. And I think I might just go up here again and do something like this to lighten this maybe a bit. Just sort of blend this in. I don't know, just kind of stir that up, however. All these irregular things. Kind of dance this in, you know, make those feather things happen using the edge of the brush, see, like this. Super effective. Okay, and maybe some of this is on here a little bit. I'm just kind of, kind of barely glaze this down, see, and just do stuff like this. See those little things happening? Just kind of brings out those. 
those feather details a little bit like that. Tell you the highlights against these darks, that's when things really come to life. It's just that pop and that contrast that is what I love. <laughs> it's absolutely what I love on these. All right, so now what I want to do is again go back to that violet color and just again the touch of this burnt, I'm sorry, raw umber. And now this time some more titanium white. I really want to get this light lavender color now and let's see a little bit more of this raw umber into it. Yeah, I want to dull that just a bit. Now some more white to that. Okay, and let's put some highlight on this. See, like that. I don't want to cover up all that uh, darker value that I put before. Because again, when you play the values together, that's what brings out dimension and texture and all that. So again, here and there, but not everywhere. And letting things happen and get along and be a team. It's like a team of players in this game. They want to play together and get the job done and really do the job that they're supposed to be doing here. All right. And with that, I'm also going to come in here and hit some highlights on his foot here. See, just like that. And I'm going to um, I'll come back in there and do some other things, but right now I just kind of want to put some highlight on his feet here. Okay, when I say highlight, I mean just that, not change the value completely of his entire foot, but highlight means putting some lighter value on and letting some of that darker value play in there. Otherwise, you lose the highlight. That's why it's a highlight, because of those dark values that contrast with it, that make it what it should be. Otherwise, when you lose that dark, there is no highlight. It's just one flat, dead color, and that's all it is. Highlight nothing. <laughs> so let those other guys play for sure. And again, if you cover up something too much, just knock it back with the other value. No big deal. And you can always have these guys playing together like they should. And just while I'm at it, I'm going to fill in this part here, this background around him a little bit. It's kind of, I kind of want to get that over with. Just kind of staring at me a little bit like, hey, what about me? <laughs> so let's get some raw umber now and some of this cat yellow. And I'm going to take some titanium white to that. Maybe a little phthalo blue. Ah, what the heck. Okay, just kind of more of this greeny color. And I'm going to just say eh, something like this. Just fill this canvas in. And I can even blend this out. Very light pressure with my brush out into that background. See, like that. It really makes it natural. All good. Okay, very light pressure as I come out here into the background again. All good, so you can change and fix anything anytime you want. You can even use your finger. Check that out. I can just stir that up with my finger a little bit and super natural. Always settle into, uh, settles it down just fine. Okay, there it is. See? Background filled in and moving on just like that. I'm just going to clean this number two flat brush off now again of that background color. And I want to keep this brush going. And I'm going to start playing these little feather details on his head here. So with that, I'm 
going to take now some phthalo blue, a little phthalo green. Let's see a little bit more phthalo blue. And here's that darker value. You can see right next to this how much darker it is. That's why I like to mix next to colors. That way I know, okay, my highlight shadow will definitely pop off of that highlight. And I have that comparison before I put it on my canvas. And that just saves me from having to let it dry and come back again in case it's not right. So, you know, something like this. Let's start coming in here as you can see like this I'm going to use the edge or the corner of the flat brush here this little guy and with that corner just kind of hash these little things like this and I kind of want to do not just a straight line down but I want to follow a curve a slight curve see how this is uh, just a little bit bent here and that's going to give his three-dimensional look as I do that so again if you do do it straight Take this light value, cover back over, redefine it again. You don't have to get all super perfectionist, but just want to give that little curve on his head there with these shadows to show the shape that's going on here. Okay, just kind of something like that. I don't know. Just kind of play these in here a little bit. Okay, and... this maybe I don't know however okay don't worry about how neat you're going I'm not I'm not really looking for a specific pattern per se but I'm just kind of in a way kind of doing this yeah maybe something like that okay so we can see something happening here starting to look all uh, all good okay and then maybe we can get some things like this rolling So let's see. Okay. Yeah, something like that. See, isn't that nice? Can really do so many cool things with this. Okay, I'll even go along here a little bit just to show just some kind of feather stuff happening. Even on here a little bit. I'll just kind of dance that around just to kind of show. See, and now we got some really neat things happening. So here's what I want to do now. I want to take just a little bit of this violet now into that. Okay, and then a little bit of phthalo blue. A little bit more violet. So this will add... A little bit more interest I think to this see like just a teeny bit right here you can add some of this color in just a little bit just very here and there but not everywhere and if I put that in just a little bit involved with this darker um, turquoise shadow color it really does something I think it, it just really pops it out of here in some really cool ways to show these extra colors in here playing like this. See, because then it shows there's some uh, deeper crevices within his feathers on his head and then some other ones that are not so deep. Maybe the way the light's hitting it just really brings out 
so much more in the way that this is detailed and how it pops and all of that. So you can see how that's doing that already. It just really, I don't know. I love playing, I'm telling you, I just, I love playing these shadows and lights back and forth like this. Really just gives it such a nice contrast and really just does wonders. It makes for a stronger pop effect and just really wows the eye in that much more, I think. So even right here, look, I'm going to play this a little bit more. Okay, just kind of maybe something like this. And I don't know, maybe something like that. See, I'm just using the edge of the flat brush, this number two flat. I'm just really just hashing in. And so again, use your angle brush if you have frayed out brushes. Maybe you don't have the nicest brushes or they're worn out and you need new ones or something. I don't know. But it's really about getting a nice edge on a brush and being able to hash these lines like this and Get these nice fine little details going. You know, don't get all crazy on you there. Okay, so again, maybe maybe right in here with that some of that violet blue color a little bit. See, like that. And I can always change it up too along this dark stuff and just get it more. I don't know, something like that maybe. And, Okay, so I'm going to clean this brush off now. Okay, go into my rinse jar. And what I want to do now is I want to take my smaller number two flat brush. Okay, and for you it might be maybe a number one or a zero zero flat brush. I don't know, but just a, a smaller flat brush. Let's just put it that way. And I'm going to... Take some more titanium white now into this light turquoise color. That's just phthalo green and phthalo blue and mostly titanium white. I really want to add some highlight on top here a little bit more. Let's see, and I'm just going to just say something like this. See that? That just makes that pop even more here with some more highlight there. And I can even go over some of this even dark stuff to show light, kind of infiltrating the shadow maybe a little bit too. So as it looks like more light's kind of infiltrating that just a, a wee bit more when I go over some of these darks, but then leave them more definitive over here. It's kind of like how light just kind of interrupts the shadow game going on a little bit. And that just really shows a lot more realistic and three-dimensional look in that way. So, okay, turning my brush over again. See, just run out of paint on the other side. And I really want to get this really light highlight on the edges like this. It really shows the light infiltrating it more right over here. Kind of like that. See that? That just really pops that so well off of there. And I'll leave this alone over here as I get this lighter value to contrast against that other stuff. And I can take now some of that. Maybe a little bit more white than I wanted, maybe. You can always settle it down with your finger if you need to. Okay. And also on the outside right here. There we go. 
super shine. All right, so a little bit of that out here as well. All right, yeah, something like that. So these details, things are really starting to take off. And this is really happening. Okay, so to make these feathers on the outside here pop a little bit more, I'm gonna take some more of that violet. And I'm gonna take some of that raw umber again. Let's see. Yep, something like that. Okay, and just tapping off some of that paint. And I'm going to sort of work just a teeny bit. See, that's still too much paint on the brush. I want this very dry brush, and I want to be able to just sort of fade this into that light value a little bit. See, just like that, just kind of. Do this little gradient like so see that that gives it more body and lift and texture three dimension all that stuff I'm gonna get in here on this green part here where things change a little bit and I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow and I'm gonna take some of this well not that much but some thalo blue you see how much that blue will really take over if you're not careful there okay so i want to do this tap off some of that paint again this is my number two my smaller number two flat and i want to go just kind of work some of this right in here a little bit of feather change on his head there and just kind of irregularly just with the edge of the brush, just kind of dance this in. And just kind of something like this. Yeah. Okay. Now I want to get some titanium white into that just a little bit. And with this highlight, I want to be able to go up here see kind of like this and just sort of pull this down into that darker green value here just a little bit not too much seeing that kind of shows some indication of different stuff there okay and i'm going to take most of that color i'm going to wipe really all of it off and i'm just going to take just titanium white and I really want to have the light that's playing big time, like right here on the very, very, very top of it. See, just like that. And just like I pulled the green into this dark, I'm going to pull this white just a teeny bit into the green that I just put and not cover all of it up. This is to really show some texture and shadow and light that's hitting this part of his um, feather here on his head. So just kind of something like that, see? And I can just kind of work this in a little bit. See, and you can just kind of settle it down. But see, that just kind of really takes this highlight to another level just a little bit. See, there's a little bit more light here hitting. It just kind of shows that if I keep it up top like this and then drag this down, see, it really, it adds more texture. See that? And it shows more light play happening here. So something like that, yeah? All right. So I'm not going to clean my brush yet. And I'm going to go back into that green that I just made right here and now this time i'm going to get some raw umber into that i want this really dark green now 
And I'm going to get a little bit more phthalo blue into that. Let's see, a little bit more. A little bit more raw umber. So I've got this really dark green now. Okay, and right along here, I just kind of want to hit the very bottom of this and just kind of do something like so. Okay, I don't want to cover all this little green up, but just the very bottom of it. See, just like that. Very, very just, very light pressure with the brush and really just kind of glazing it in there, not really covering anything up. And I can really take this back up in here if I want to a little bit more. Let's see, just kind of here and there, but not everywhere. And look at that. See, it just really gives just more interest in this bird, man, this beauty. <laughs> All right. Okay, cleaning that brush off. Rinsing it off one more time. And now I want to start to work on the face a little bit. There's some highlights. There's some, you know, different values here. So this is going to really take off and this face is going to be really cool. So I'm going to take some titanium white now and it's in this purple or this violet that I made. It's got just a, a, a lavender with just a touch of raw armor to dull it down and mostly titanium white. So with a little water on the brush, I was able to just reactivate this a little bit more and add some more white into that. And I'm going to take, as, I, as you saw, I loaded the brush. I got this nice edge on this flat brush. And again, my number two, my smaller one. And I'm going to do all of these little indication things like this. And just kind of this, these lines that if you look close at them, you'll see these on a bird, on a parrot. So just kind of, just these irregular lines, you know, just kind of follow the kind of the shape of this a little bit. See, kind of like this. And again, cover something if it's out of whack. Okay, and like that. Okay, something like that. You can see there, there's a little texture build up there. So what I'm going to do now is, before I go on with that, I'm going to let that ride for a little bit. I'm going to now take some of this raw, I'm sorry, phthalo blue and raw umber together. Okay, that's for our black. And I don't want a whole lot of paint on the brush. Just a little bit. Okay, getting that edge on there established pretty well. And I'm going to come across this little line here. I'm going to take this up right here. And I think about right, right here, I'm going to hash in something like so. Okay, and I'm going to create something of this little pattern thing here. I don't know what this is. This is like a very nice, distinct something going on here where he has this really cool 
little like nature's tattoo on his face here. <laughs> I guess if that's what you call it. Okay, just part of his feather details here. Okay, getting more paint there. I want it a little bit more. Okay, give me something like that. Okay, I'm gonna get just a little bit more water on this brush. I really want this to flow a little bit more than that. Okay, not much water. Oh yeah, see, there we go, something like that. Okay, something like that. And I think this is going to come out to about, let's get those bristles on there again, reloaded. Okay, I think it's going to come out to about right, I think right here. And you can make yours however, you know, if you find that something looks better or you prefer where these are, you know, definitely do what you want to do. I think nature is very random. I think that a lot of birds, these kind of parrots, have this, but they probably don't have everything exact, of course. It's like saying every cat that you see doesn't have the same exact stripe design. So however you want to make yours, you're the creator of your bird here. Okay, and right in here, I want to make these hashes like this. And let's see, I gotta get a little bit more water than that. Okay, so that will really flow. All right, something like this, I think. Okay, something like that, I'm thinking. And then right in here, I really want to get my water on this brush so that it really makes these nice, precise lines here. So let me get some more of that raw umber and phthalo blue mixture now made up. Okay, wiggling, 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 pulling through. Voila, nice little tip or edge there, I should say. And I am going to really come in here. Okay, I don't know, something like that. I can always clean that up. And now, let's see, I'm going to come in here now and do something like this. And just kind of I don't know do something like that maybe
I don't know, maybe something like that. Okay, and again, I can always clean that up, so I'm not worried about that. And let's see, just gonna I don't do something like that. And then right here, his little, I guess his nostril, right? Is something like that. All right. So now I'm going to clean that brush off a little bit and I'm going to go in here now with some more of that violet and I'm going to grab some of this magenta red with it. And let's see, I'm going to take a little of this raw umber to it to dull it just a bit. Yeah, just a little bit like that. And again, I'm going to take the edge of my number two flat brush and I'm going to go and put some of these darker values in between some of this white and, you know, have this play in here with this. So this really builds up more face texture and dimension and all that realism. So all right, look at that. See, that's just really taking that out to another level just a little bit there. All right, I'm going to take now after cleaning this number two, I'm going to take, again, that light lavender with some more white into it. And what I want to do is I want to knock back just some of this dark value, see, just like this. <coughs> see how nice that is? You can totally, anytime you want, just take care of anything and it's like it never happened see I can just come in here and clean this up a bit see just like that I can you go like this Okay, anything, anytime, it's all good, see? I can even clean up this nostril a little bit. See that? Okay, and one thing I wanted to do is I want to take this, actually and knock this back a bit. And let that dry just a little bit there. Okay. All right, I'm going to get a little bit more water now on my brush. I'm going to go back into that raw umber and 
phthalo blue. And once again, I'm going to go in here. And just kind of dab these little things in here. Something like that. And then right in here, I wanted to kind of do something like this. Okay, just kind of hashing this a little bit like this. Okay, something like that. Okay, hash, 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 these little things. Okay, that makes it a little bit better there, I think. Just kind of something like this, maybe. Okay, just kind of cleans that up a little bit, gives it more of a realistic look in that way. See, so anything you want to do, you can just knock it back if it didn't come out right the first time or whatever. See, I'm doing that. It's all good to go. Maybe there's some breaks on some of these. I don't know. Okay, something like that. Boom. I like that. And now with this lighter value, I'm going to go in here. And I just kind of want to, again, show some more of this face, check, uh, face texture. Okay, there's something like that, yeah. All right. All right, I'm gonna work on the eye a little bit now with just a little something here. Um, I'm gonna take a little bit of this violet, a little bit of this raw umber to it. Okay, just tapping off a lot of that paint. And right above the eye, like right here, kind of just want to do something like this. If you can see the value change there a little bit. Okay, I don't know. Uh, let's go work a little of this into there. Not much. Okay, and then clean that off. And I'm going to take my script liner brush here. Just a little bit of water. I don't want a whole lot. This is the one time I don't want water all that much on my script liner because I'm going to be using it to dab a dot for a highlight on the eye. And I just really want to get into this smaller area. So just kind of fixating the, bris uh, the bristles to be in a point like that. And I'm just going to dip it into some titanium white. Okay, just kind of like so. Kind of like so. And I want to go just very carefully, just kind of like oh, yeah, just kind of something like that. See that? And now I can wipe a lot of that paint off the brush, and I can go into here a little bit. 
show a little bit brighter of a color here. Just kind of dab that, see, just like that. And it just really pops and shines his eye out a little bit more that way. And I like that. So what I'm going to do now is with some more titanium white, since I have the script liner, I put a little bit more water on the brush. And I did, I did kind of load it a bit. And I'm just going to sort of use the tip here. You can use your angle brush or even your flat brush for this if you want. It's all good. See, you can get some more details and stuff in here, maybe hashed in. Okay. Just kind of something like in here. See this white in here? Kind of plays in there nice and really builds more texture and dimension and pop and shine and all of that. Okay, I don't know, something like that maybe. All right, and he is looking alive. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take a little bit of this violet, a little bit of raw umber, and some titanium white. A little bit of phthalo blue, a little bit of raw umber, okay, more titanium white. I really want to scratch in some highlights on the beak now. So again, not worried about how neat or crazy this gets. I don't want a little whole ton of paint, but Again, I got dark value on here that I can just knock it back to find it, whatever I want to do. So I'm going to take this light value and I'm going to just kind of do something like this. Just make like, I don't know. Actually, you know what? I apologize. I don't think I want it the same value as in the face. So what I'm going to actually do I'm just going to take this raw umber, or I'm sorry, phthalo blue and raw umber. That's my black there. And I'm going to wipe a lot of that paint off my brush and get titanium white to that. And I think I'll do like a Payne's gray instead of this lavender. So, look at I can just cover that up, no big deal. Oh, yeah. And I can just do this. All right, and show some highlight and three dimension. It's going to it's going to put that three dimension on the beak. Put that highlight, see, just like that. Super easy. And now I'll just kind of dance this in. I don't know, however, I'm just kind of maybe with my finger there. Just kind of do something like that. And then right here, I want to use this highlight as a separator where his beak is coming together like that. Okay, and then also... See, something like that. I like that. Okay. So without cleaning my brush, I'm going to take most of that paint off my brush. Oil, and I'm going to take now some titanium white. Get a little bit lighter now. And I really want to show kind of where this comes up in this separation. I really want this very distinct. I'll say like this. Okay, and right out here, 
a little bit more highlight there, I think. Maybe something like that, maybe. And maybe something like that. Yeah. Okay. I like that. Something like that. Okay, I'll just dance this back over, I think. Maybe something like that. I don't know. Anyway. I think what I might do, maybe there's a little bit too much highlight, but again, I can take phthalo blue, and I can take raw umber. And one more time. With this dark value, knock some of this back. See, like maybe, I don't know, something like that, maybe. And not too much, just kind of wherever. See, just like that. All right, we're in business. Super effective. Okay, now I'm just going to take a little titanium white now to it, not much. And it's a little grayed down a bit. And I just kind of want to brush this over right here. Just very light pressure with my brush. And that's going to create some shadow again right here. We want shadows and we want to make this pop a little bit see yeah like that and let's see i think right along in here so take a lot of that paint off my brush there okay and i'm just going to glaze this out a little bit okay just kind of stir that up and bring it out a little bit Okay, kind of like that. It just really naturally gives that blend into everything. And maybe a little bit up here. So it's just not these hard colors and lines that are just, you know, not laying natural and don't look right and all that. Okay, maybe something like so, yeah. All right, cleaning this brush now, this is number two flat. And I want to start making more feather details on his body now here. So with that, I'm going to take, I forgot to drop it on the uh, floor a couple times. <laughs> I'm going to take this number, the bigger number two flat brush. You can see, I don't know why these are different sizes. I don't know if it's the brand, but again, on my last video, I showed you this. Or the one with the vintage truck. You can see that they're both number twos but as you can see the bristles are not the same so i don't know whatever this is your number four and your number two but this says number two maybe they made a mistake at the factory i don't know but i'm gonna go with this size that's all i know <laughs> that's all i need to know and for you i would say don't get too crazy about the numbers involved just really look at your brush look at your picture and the uh, region that you're going to be painting in and just more or less decide, you know, what size that you feel is suitable for the area that you're working in. So it's really all it is. There's no real technical have tos or anything like that. So I'm going to take now some cad yellow and to that, just a touch of this neon yellow to it. And I want just a hint, I mean a pin drop of orange. Orange, it will really take over if you're not careful. Okay, let's see. Yeah, like that. See, I barely put any in there at all, and maybe just a teeny bit more. I don't know, pin drop there. Okay, I'm going to go with this. 
And again, I can always adjust it if I don't like it, no big deal. So I'm gonna go in here with some of that. And you know what? I actually do want a little bit more yellow, a little bit more of this fluorescent yellow just to make it more vibrant and bring it up. Okay, let's see what I get with this. There we go. That's more of what I was wanting to do. But you can see how transparent it is. That's okay though. Okay, I'm going to take this over and start building some feather details and shapes. So I'll do something like this. And I'll leave a little gap here and I'll go right here. Okay, something like this. Okay, and I'm going to go something like right here, maybe. Don't really want that into here, out in my blue. Okay, just kind of right here, like I was trying to get to. All right, so, man, I want some of that. Well, this is going to be more orange in here, so I won't worry about that. But I do want some more of this yellow, more vibrant color right there. Okay, I'm just going to pick up more yellows. start really getting specific now with my values and the details and where I want to place those and let's see I'm gonna go more yellow in here and honestly I'm gonna take now a little bit more titanium white into that yellow because white makes it more opaque so that it shows up better so it's not so transparent and I'll take both of those yellows the fluorescent and the cad yellow Okay, and I'll do something like this and you can see how much better that shows up and how much more it lays down more opaque like okay this is going to be more of a highlight in here and I'm going to have that just kind of run right here into this area this breast area here and also some of that right in here Okay, so something like this. And also, I'm going to have it hitting right here on him. Okay, and these things just popping off really well like this. Okay, just where things are hitting and there was part of a wing that I did forget but I can just come in here kind of like that all right so just kind of base coating this again, just kind of getting that general color where I want some highlights. And you know, like I said, the breast area right here is going to be more of a vibrant yellow that's really taken off in this area here, as you can see there. Okay, and again, up in this area, like I said. And right over here okay and in a way something like this in here as well quite pleased with what I'm seeing so far okay so 
Now I'm going to go in and with that same number four flat brush here, or I'm sorry, did I say number four? My bigger number two, it could be your number four. Anyways, it's whatever. The appropriate brush for the place that I'm working in. So I'm going to take now some yellow, a little cad orange. Okay, just a little bit. Titanium white. Okay, into that. A little bit more orange. I want it more vibrant. Maybe a little bit of this fluorescent pink. Okay, yeah, I like that. See, it just really warms the crap out of it like that when you do that. It really brings it up. Okay, so I'm going to go in here now. I'm going to bring these values in just a little bit. See, just kind of in his little stuff playing there a little bit. See, maybe a little bit right there. Oh, good. See, I like that. Little little things. Okay, just kind of playing some of that color in here a little bit. All right. So now, what I want to do is... I want to take and grab a little bit of cad orange now without cleaning and I want to go just over a little bit of this and I really want to settle that down and make it more natural looking. And I really want to blend this in, this shadow stuff here, really well. And have it not so wowed out like that. And let's see if I can... Just kind of settle down over this a little bit. Okay, so I'll just kind of come into here a little bit with some of this. See, and I'm just kind of doing these little feather detail indications like this. See, like so. And even in here a little bit. Just kind of going for it. Not too worried about it. And let's see. What I'd like to do, actually, I'm going to add to my palette now a different brown. This is going to be this is going to be my burnt umber now. Just want to take a little bit of that to my cad orange here. See, just a teeny bit. And with that, I kind of want to go back again. And I can really come in here. Take the edge of this brush here. So I'm going to go ahead and fix those bristles again. Pull them through and reloading them again, as you can see there. So... Now when I come in here, you can see the difference now on how much better that looks with details and all that and getting those more precise in that way. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of take this over this a bit. And it just kind of hash in these little things using the edge of the brush. Okay, loading it up again, like I said. And okay, and this is going to be 
some shadow a little bit along here with some of this sort of dulled down darker orange a bit. Okay, and also right in here is some more of that. Okay, so something like this. And just kind of settle this stuff down a little bit, yeah. It really just all right, so let's take some more of that now. More of this burnt umber, this cat orange, and I can come back in here now and just all kinds of stuff like this. See, and See, just however, there's no right or wrong, just kind of get in there and just sort of make it happen. See, and I can sort of make these irregular so they're not so hard lined like that. See, that changes its ability to be more natural looking. Okay, just little things like that, see? And you can get these little shadows in here and make them natural and settle them down with more layers and stuff. So, okay, I'm gonna clean this brush again. And I'm gonna go with more of this cad orange. And I'm gonna take some of this yellow, quite a bit into it. Okay, and just a touch of burnt umber to that, just to dull it a bit. And now just a touch of magenta red. Okay, so we're saying something like this maybe, yeah? Okay, I'm going to come back in here and I'm just going to sort of play this in. So, you know, change up maybe the... Uh, the values a little bit maybe just sort of drag this in here I'm just kind of letting this color just sort of glaze over some of that not too worried about it at all okay okay I'm gonna clean that off now and let's see, I want to hash in now a little bit of orange, some yellow, getting most of that yellow, off, or sorry, orange off there, getting more yellow onto it actually. Okay, and let's see, right down fly out of the way this isn't a real jungle your jungles outside <laughs> and I'm gonna make go a little bit like this maybe I don't know just put a little bit of this value down there okay just playing these around
Okay. Okay, right where these two came together, with that vibrant yellow and this more orangey yellow in between this reddish orange and this value there. Okay, just kind of blending these together a little bit and just letting them come together and blend and do their thing. I tell you, it's really an excellent way to settle things down and just let the natural flow start to happen here. Okay, some more yellow here, some more orange, and some titanium white. Let's see what happens there. So mix that up there. Okay. And I can come in here and see how I can like get this ruffle going here. Okay, something like that. And I can do actually is add some more white to that. That's going to really help it more opaque like and let's add a little bit more orange. Let's add a little bit of this. There we go. That fluorescent pink into there it really brightens it up. Okay, let's see what we got here. Yeah, see that'll cover that up better. See, like that. And see, I'm just going around this dark stuff and popping some of these little highlights here and there. See, so these show up a little bit more. I'm actually going to get a little bit more orange onto that. There we go. Okay, something like that maybe. And uh, just put some more of those here and there. Not everywhere. Okay, just something like that. And you know, it's really okay to experiment. You can really just play these in back and forth until you like what you see. Play these highlights in, streak back more of these dark values, go on with that reddish tone again. Really just go for it because you know, you can just push them around and cover them up. Anything you want to do. All good to go. You can never, you can never go wrong with acrylics. It's always always another path. You'll always arrive there somehow, some way. And let's see, I'm going to take now some more of this orange and some of this raw umber now to it. And what I want to do is kind of want to play some shadow stuff right in here a little bit, maybe. I'm just something like this, maybe, I don't know. Okay, maybe I can just kind of do this. Maybe something like that, yeah. Okay. Play some more of that back in here, maybe. Okay, a little bit of paint left on the brush. I don't really have much more, so I can load it up again. So I'm going to take now some lighter values and just kind of drag them down a little bit more. So I'm going to take now some more yellow some of this fluorescent yellow. OK, 
Okay, just a little bit into it and kind of do something like this now. See, I settled that down a little bit there, making that more natural looking. And I'm going to take some more white now into this mixture. And I'm going to go back up here. Okay, and again down here a little bit. I'll just grab these highlights one more time. Okay. Now just a little bit of raw umber into this same color. Um, actually, I'm going to get some orange into that just a little bit. Okay, so it's just this kind of dark orangey color here and just kind of want to go back in and just sort of do this okay something like that Okay, so something like that. All right, just a little bit of white. And back to that orangey color here. Just a little bit here and there, but not everywhere. Okay, just kind of something like that, maybe, yeah. And...
Let's go back now into some of that yellow. I'm going to get a little white now for some more opaque and some of that fluorescent yellow. Okay, a little bit more regular yellow. And sort of fade this down a little bit, but I really want it heavy up here and right here. Have that breast area kind of pop a little bit there on the bird. Okay. Um, Let's see, a little bit of that in here. And again, I'm trying to get this striking highlight right there on them. And also, right there on his, right there on his leg. Okay, something like that. Okay, so layer after layer, we just build it up, like I said, and just continue on. Okay, I'm going to clean that off now. And let's see, I want a little bit more actually of that same yellow effect. Right in here, maybe a little bit. Okay, so now we're seeing some stuff here, really starting to come together. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. And now what I want to do is, again, take some yellow little bit of raw umber to that just a little bit not much and kind of want to come in here well it's kind of hard to see that actually I'll tell you what let me get a little bit of orange and a little bit of raw umber into that just a teeny bit okay yeah and I'm going to hit just some of these shadows, show some of these feather details right in this area. Okay, see like that. And I'm also going to hit that right in this area. Let's see, maybe just a little bit in this area here. and also see we're kind of getting more of these details here established so maybe just like right down in here see just like that and maybe even right here okay so something like that yeah all good. All 
All right, now I want to make them pop just a little bit more. So I'm going to take some titanium white after cleaning my brush. Just a hint of yellow. So you can see there, very, very light. And I really just want to come in here and just, just kind of bam, like that, right? And a little bit in here. Something like that, maybe. And right here as well. And maybe even up, up in here a bit. I don't know. Just kind of pop that a bit. And that's part of his feather right here. Just kind of sticking out there. Okay, something like maybe like that, and then right along here, maybe. Yeah, okay. All right, a little bit more cat orange now. A little bit more yellow. And just kind of get that up in here a little bit more. Again, just kind of knocking this back a bit, just making it more natural looking. Okay. Kind of wherever. All right, just getting more yellow now. And I want to come back up in here. Just sort of blend this down a little bit. And bring this right back up into this highlight that I made here. Okay. Okay, kind of evening things out a little bit so it's not so bam, you know what I mean, in one spot. Okay, so something like that. Just hitting all these little things. Okay, so with more of that yellow, I want to take now and sort of run this together up into here a little bit. Maybe something like that. So, uh -oh. some of this sort, maybe. All 
All right, a little bit more cad orange, a little bit of burnt umber. And just gonna take some of this color down a little bit more. Oh, something like that. Just kind of going over some of this, see, like that. Settles it down more and you really start to see more of his natural look to him that way. Okay, a little bit more white to that. Well, let's see. I want more orange than that. Okay, so... Yeah, just kind of going over this a little bit more. Go over it as much as you want to, or whatever you want to do. Okay, just grabbing cat orange with that other colors left on the brush there. Okay, a little bit more yellow now. A little white into that yellow. And I kind of want to connect just some more of this right here. Okay, just kind of something like that. Okay, and I'll just settle some of this down a little bit. Not too much. Okay, something like that. Okay, and just something like that. Just settle down just a little bit. Okay, I'll just show a little bit more feather detail with some of this. All right. Yeah. Okay, and cleaning off that brush, drying it off, and I want to go back into some more yellow now, and a little bit more white, okay, and strike some more of this stuff in here. Okay, some, some feather stuff like that, and again, I want to come in here and brighten up some of that. Okay, getting more yellow, getting more white.
Okay, so I'm just using that yellow with some white in it. And as you can see with yellow being that it's so transparent, it really takes a few layers to go back and to really just build up some stuff like that. Okay. All right, so a little bit more yellow now. And I'm just going to come back in. Okay, so I'll leave some of this white in there, but it really just shines and sparkles that up really good. Okay. All right, we got this going on. Super duper. Okay, I'll even have some of that come down here a little. Sneak it in maybe just a little bit like that, yeah. Okay, something like that, I think. And let's see, I'm going to take now a little bit of CAD, a little bit of this CAD orange and CAD yellow. Okay, and I really just want to connect some of this. Just kind of something like that. And again, I'm going to take some burnt umber and some cat orange. And I'm just going to come in here now and once again, just kind of play some of this in. Put these little feather detail things in, little shadow things. Yeah, it just kind of cleans up some of this stuff. Yeah, 
just kind of stuff like this. Okay, so however, and I'll even put some of that in here. Okay, just some little shadow stuff maybe in there. Something like that, maybe. Okay, just however. Okay, cleaning that brush off. And let's get again. Work this orange and this yellow right back up in there. You can just, like I said, take your finger. Kind of do what you got to do sometimes, maybe, yeah. Okay, all good. All right, I think something like that. What I want to do now is, once again, take this number two small flat brush here and I want to on some of these feathers here play a little dusting sort of game here um, I want to take a little bit of white and phthalo green together see just kind of something like this and I kind of want to go right here and watch very little pressure on my brush I'm gonna wipe a lot of that paint off actually on my cloth here and check it out I'm just going to just sort of barely touch the canvas with this about with this value on my brush and I'm gonna sort of just come into that light value just a little bit just does something to the feathers I think it just kind of makes them more three-dimensional makes them kind of look more round you know sort of rounded in a way maybe okay and right in here too I don't know you can skip this step it's not super huge but again these little things they build up it's kind of like shopping a little bit it goes a long way and just builds up and becomes a lot as you Continue to add little things, figuratively speaking, to the cart. And it makes a huge difference the more we do this. All these little things that come together to make a big, big difference. So, I don't know. Just something like that, maybe. Okay, and I'm going to take now, again, some more titanium white. going to once again just kind of give this nice highlight kiss here on his wing okay something like that maybe yeah I don't know, something like that, maybe. Okay, so you can mess with this however much you want to mess with it. 
Um, I'm going to move on now to the feet here. And what I'm going to do is actually take, let's see, a really frayed out brush. I'm thinking like something like this. I let paint dry on it one time and I really just got crazy with it. <laughs> and you can see all the bristles that are just frayed out. This is going to be what I want to do texture on the feet with. With that, I'm going to take some violet with this brush. A little bit of raw umber into it. See, I'm just going to tap it like this. Yeah, and then it's just all over those frayed out bristles. And I'm just going to just sort of do this. See, this is going to add some really nice texture onto his feet here. See that, just like that. See, that just really does something there for that. So, same thing on this one here. Okay, I'm thinking something like that. Okay, hang with me. I'll be right back. I'm going to clean that brush off. You know, it kind of looks like a mess there, but what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go back to my script liner, and I'm going to take just a poke of some white, just a touch of that lavender here. Okay, just like this. And I'm going to go in here now and just sort of just kind of do this number right here. See, and I'll let some of this dark that I just put in play in there. It really just builds up these little textures on his feet here. See that? That's... Kind of just uh, a real subtle way to just effectively add some stuff to his feet like this. You know what I'm saying? Just okay, maybe a little bit more white into that. Okay, so just. Getting something like this. Okay, and I'll knock this back too, of course. All good. Don't worry about how neat it is, of course. Knock it all back if you don't like it or just whatever. You can do these feet however. No right or wrong, really. Okay, I can even use my finger and sort of tap that out a little bit if I don't like it. Okay, now I'm going to clean my brush with that. And I'm going to take now, back to my number two small flat brush, and back to my black hair that I made, I'm going to take that raw umber and phthalo blue. Okay, and just going to add some shadow under here for him and also kind of along in here see that just puts texture back into his feet again and right in here too there's this little separation here Ok, 
okay some of these ones that are too white here I'm just kind of doing this so see it just kind of makes it I think more interesting this way and let's do that over here See, that just kind of knocks that back a little bit, but it keeps that texture on his feet there. See, so like that. And I want to clean that off now. And I just want to get just a little titanium white. Okay, just loading it a little bit here. And right here, there's highlight hitting. And I'll wipe the rest of that paint off my brush because I just want to take this and just sort of drag it into some of this like that, yeah. Okay, see something like that. And then we got some highlight playing on them a little bit. I can go in here with some of that. Okay, we'll do something like that. And there we go for the feet. Okay, I'm gonna go back now to my number four flat brush, my bigger number four. And what I'm gonna do is take some raw umber, a little bit of phthalo blue, so we get that darker value now. And a little less blue, because I want it more of a dark brown. And I'm just gonna start playing some of these little things in here. I don't know, a little wood details I guess okay a little skinnier line right there so it's going to show more dimension and view on this so let's see I'm going to take maybe a little bit of shadow on here right there I don't know a little bark detail maybe okay and Something like that, maybe. I'm just putting the values where they go for the moment. Okay, maybe something like that. And then I'm going to clean this brush off a little bit. And now I want to take some titanium white, a little bit of raw umber to that, and a little cad yellow actually into that. So we got this little different value change here, and I'm just gonna play this here and there. See, just kind of something like this. And maybe on the edge of this, a little bit right here. However, no right or wrong, just go for it. Let these things happen however they will. Change them if you want to change them, but just kind of see what you get when you do stuff like this. And then, like I said, adjust it from there. Maybe it's close to what you want, and then you can just add another tiny little bit of a value on top, maybe. Okay, some more orange. And some raw umber. I'm sorry, burnt umber. Okay, let's do some highlight stuff. So, right up here. And, I don't know. However you want to do it. Just throw these values around, you know. Whatever, it's all good. Okay, and...
chain all these values playing together, like I said, it's all good. Okay, these little hard lines here, just settling those back a bit. Okay, now let me grab some more of this orange, maybe some more of this yellow, and maybe a little bit of this burnt umber into it, and maybe some more white. Yeah, stuff like this. Let's see what we can come up with on that. Okay, I don't know. Of the same color there, so that's okay. Okay, I'm going to add some raw umber now to that. Let's see. And right under here. Maybe this will just kind of do something like this. I don't know. And let's see. And uh, let's see, I'll go, I don't know, maybe right here. Okay, and yeah, just however you want to do this. Super, super freestyle. Just have your lights and darks and some orange tones playing around. And yeah, it's all good. So look. Even come in here like this and just uh, do that, maybe. Okay, I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna wipe some of that paint off my brush now, a lot of it, and I'm gonna go back into some white now. And I'm going to take, and I'm going to go kind of right here. And that in turn will give this some three-dimensional look to it there. striking there and there. So yeah, however, and now without cleaning, I'm just going to take some more orange, maybe a little yellow to warm it up a bit. And kind of want to just give this thing a little bit more color here and vibrance maybe to it a little bit here and there. I don't know. However you want to do that. Okay, something like that. Okay, and then go back into this frayed out brush too if I want to. And I can go, you know, back into that orangey brown kind of color there mostly white see and I can just kind of see how that just builds texture like that not that nice and I can even do this and fill some of it in if I want to so however Okay, I don't know, any way you want. Okay.
And one little thing that I wanted to do, just real quick. I wanted to just take some burnt umber, my number two flat here, my small number two flat. Get that black in here. And right here between the feet and his leg right here, or his foot and his leg, I should say. I just kind of want to go a shadow right here. It shows a, a separation in a way. See like that? Just a little detail. I don't know that I saw there that I kind of caught. Okay. And just sort of glaze right here. Show a little more, more shadow, realistic shadow play. Okay, and I thought, you know what, I'll take some burnt umber and just kind of do something like this maybe right here. Okay, and maybe, I don't know, maybe a little bit more white out here. Some more highlight on his wing there. Just kind of. Streaking that out maybe a little bit. Okay. All right, so you can do this to any degree, like I said, and you can really build up more layers and really bring this out however you want. But for me, with that said, I'm going to go ahead now with my script liner and titanium white, lots of water, and I think I'm going to sign this right here. And I want to thank you guys so much for all your watch time and support, and I hope these lessons are clear and helpful. Please let me know down in the description box in your comments section how this went for you and any questions you may have or anything that for feedback you want to give me. I'd love to hear from you guys. And until next time, happy painting everyone.